Rhett, since you're hanging with us, I don't think I've ever, or maybe I have, I can't remember, um, sort of asked you what got you interested in sort of video engineering, and did you always sort of want to do marine science-based uh, video engineering, or are you just sort of thought this was a great opportunity to learn video engineering in a different setting? So, um, someone asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up when I was nine, mm -hmm. and I said, make wildlife documentaries, and I've kind of just pursued that kind of a path since yeah. then. Like, I went to, I made a lot of YouTube videos pretending to be Steve Irwin when I was like 13, <laughs> and That's then awesome. I went to, to undergrad for wildlife ecology and just uh, finished my master's in. Top left. Mm -hmm. Your master's in? Science and fish, um, in science and natural history <laughs> filmmaking, so making nature documentaries. Uh, and science then, and fish. <laughs> and I, I was like, wait, what? No. And then, uh, and then I, I got this internship actually a few years ago, um, but because of the pandemic, I couldn't oh, do it until you're now. you're in my group, so, yeah. So, uh, yeah, more. yep, we're in the same, the same uh, delayed cohort. Delayed so. cohort. Oh, there's, oh, is that a rope, that rope or a sponge? That's a uh, coral. That's a sponge. I think, yeah, oh, yeah, too. sorry, a coral. Coral, okay. Um, but at any rate, so uh, it's um, a very direct winding path. Mm. Can we get a partial zoom on the coral, please? Yeah, that's go awesome. ahead there, Rhett. Oh, yeah. It's a very... And we have a sea star pretty Oh, my gosh, it's tiny. Tighter. Any bamboo-ness there? Yeah, I, I think it's I think a it is, yeah. Oh, I see it on the on the back stem. Yeah. Nice. Okay, come wide, please. Uh, I was feeling bamboozled there. Huh. <laughs> There's another star up there to the right, just I chilling out. I think it's an echnomysis, unbranched bamboo coral. Uh, you can come wide if we aren't already. We are wide. Okay. And then... Uh, I actually have not done very much marine stuff before this, mm. but... Look at that tiny little foray on the right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meep. Cute. <laughs> but I like it. That's great. I think the important question is, are the videos of you pretending to be Steve Irwin still on YouTube? That's oh, a good question. The, those are... Uh, <laughs> That's the one we really need to... <laughs> mostly private. <laughs> <laughs> mostly. <laughs> mostly, so there's like one... You mean they're hard to find. They're hard to find. <laughs> I mean, you know the titles, so it could be easy to find. I, I got on Nickelodeon as a kid pretending to be Steer Irwin also. Oh, <laughs> no way. Yeah. That's they, amazing. It was like early YouTube, so if you had like a thousand viewers, you were like a big deal in, uh, in that era. Um, so YouTube, uh, Nickelodeon featured a bunch of YouTubers, and uh, I was one of them. Apparently. That's cool. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a partial on this coral back here? Yes, the white one? No, That's the leggy or young yellow one. Star red. Yeah. Uh, go no. ahead there. It's in a little pocket. Net. Oh, and there's a net. Oh, yeah. yeah. Huh. Net killed that coral, maybe. I think that, no, that coral, it's a hard coral. It's still alive. Oh, Raj. Uh, Okay, come wide, please. I feel like there needs to be a forum just for people who are fans of the Nautilus wench. <laughs> <laughs> the most niche fans. <laughs> Definitely have had a few. They're like, put the wench camera on. <laughs> so there are, they are out there. You've gotten a couple wench questions we today. Have. <laughs> Somebody's actually asking, asking, how's the theater cable oiled? Wait, oiled once a year, how do we do that? How the, the what is? The cable, the 6-8. Yeah, I think they're, yes. Asking about how the 6-8's doing? How is it oiled? How's it oiled? How is it oiled? We oiled once a year. It. We <laughs> do not oil it, we grease it. They are related, but they're not the same. And it's doing swell. We're still on the factory grease from this one. It's a pretty new cable was spooled on at the start of last year. So not hasn't been quite on on the ship for a year yet. Mm. Um, is it a new cable every year? Or do they like fully retract it somehow and then grease it and then pull it back in? Uh, when we grease the cable, which we try to do once a year-ish, um, we do it on whatever the deepest dive expected to be is on the cruise that we plan to oh, okay. do it. Cool. There's a cool rock face here. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a rock pile. Yeah, the system is rigged up between the turning shiv and the overboarding shiv on okay. just a little air-powered grease pump thing. Okay. It's a, it's a mess. It sounds like a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Air-powered grease, that definitely sounds like a mess. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to start 30 meter steps? Let's go. 0 0.2 knots? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah. Or we could even do 50 meter steps, 0 0.2, but. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Looks like there's some things worth looking at just up ahead in Adelaide's view. But then let's. Uh, Let's let the momentum stop on this one before we call another one in, too. Okay. Nice. Ooh, overhang? Yep. Yes. Okay. We'll definitely see the overhang and the Adelaide yep. to view. Ooh. Little tiny overhang. So I think these brown corals we're going by are Solandaria hydrozoans. Can we Look get some still cam shots of yeah, this? Yeah, for sure. Look at them all on the one side of the rock. It's just very pronounced. Yeah, let me look over yeah. here. They're all yep. on that one side of that rock too. Yep. Funny. Yeah. So that is the Wow. I'm trying to get my directions here. <laughs> We're looking North. south. So that's the west south. side. That's the west side. Okay, great. Oh, it just keeps going up. Yeah. Look at all those fans. Yeah, look at the view in the Atlanta cam. It's mm -hmm. yeah. really Gorgeous. quite spectacular. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Okay, I think we can do another small ship move. You want 50 or 30? Uh, 50 is fine. Just, okay. uh, just I guess slow. slow. Slow is the board I was looking for there. Gotcha. Bridge nav. Can we have another step? Five zero meters, two two zero speed, point two knots. Thank you. It's just really dominated by that. Um, yeah. Very much so, yeah. Hydrozoan solandaria. Is that, mm -hmm. is that what we're. Of course, as soon as we yep. ask for that move, that yep. flattens out. Coolest terraced, like tiered thing. There's all these different steps, and they all have the that brownish yellow coral on them. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Yeah, it's like a monoculture of them 
almost. Oop. Try Just culture. when I say that, then there's the <laughs> pink coral that we collected. <laughs> Another array of sponges just below the lasers. So someone was wondering sort of what's the standard of practice if we come across something that's never before seen or mm. weird. <laughs> um, so if you remember, we've talked a little bit about our scientists ashore who have been really helping us a lot identify things, if whether they're poorly understood or if they do look completely new. Um, and in some cases during during the dives that we've done on this expedition, we've been able to collect some samples of those poorly understood to maybe new things. Um, and then it takes a lot of time to actually verify if something is indeed new. Um, but we you know, try to document it the best we can and, and if we're able to sample it so that uh, scientists are able to get a closer look, then uh, yeah, we do. Can we get a partial on whatever this is? Or actually, not a partial, but a close-up. Sorry, I had my headphones off to scratch my ear. A partial on that thing? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, please. I'm gonna keep mo moving towards it. Oh. Huh. Ooh. A little oh. Anemones, what is this? What is this? Huh. Weird. Ah. Uh, uh, they do look like our rock has the measles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, and is that ooh. the green? Huh. And are these like hold fast of some kind underneath? Mm -hmm. They're so much bigger than the actual middle part. And okay. Mm, Thanks. Wide. It's like little yellow circles jutting out from them. Interesting. That's crazy looking. Hmm. Is that just a single one? It looks like it. There were a couple other ones below the little patch. Mm -hmm. Did they kind of close up as we approached, or did I just imagine that? Mm. As I bonked, I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. I didn't see. Like little tiny anemones. Yeah. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Can we zoom in on that hole that the lasers just crossed over? Yeah. I want to try to get a better understanding of the rocks that we're looking at. Okay, go ahead, please.
Hmm. Okay. Thank okay, you. Thanks. Looks like you're starting to get some steepness back. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to continue with 50 meter moves? The decision process is exclusively based off Atalanta's sonar. Okay, good to know. What's this little guy? Is it a crinoid? Yep. I think so. A crinoid or Percentage. Zoom in on this guy, please. Oh, yeah. Crinoid. On a little tiny Crinoid. coral. I think. Yep. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Bridge nav. Can we have another step? Five zero meters, two two zero. Thank you. So for um, the fourth graders, thanks for joining us still. We, um, for students who want to continue to watch us dive after school, um, we are on this particular dive going to be exploring until about 12 p.m. Hawaii time. Um, so that would be like six. We'll Eastern. be on the sea floor for another five hours. Yeah. So they can um, go to Nautilus Live at Oregon and definitely continue to watch at home. If we can swing over there, I'd like to get a view of this coral. Yeah, we can. And there's a fish right next to it. will be good science and fish. <laughs> okay, zoom in, please. Okay, I think that's still this hydrozone that we've Oops. been seeing, but I'm not quite sure. Put a little tighter, please. Okay, thank you. Okay. Another nice crack to follow. Fissure. 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 Mm -hmm. Lynette, have a mapping question for you. If you're on SPL. All right. Go Someone's just it. wondering when you map the seabed during uh, transit in between dives, what resolution do you all get? Hmm. Um, I think we usually grid at a hundred meter resolution, um, but it depends a little bit on the depth that we're at and how fast the ship is moving. Hmm. Um, but usually we're in pretty deep water and we're moving pretty fast. Um, so 100 meter resolution I think is pretty typical. Got it, thanks. Yep. What is that, about 2% of water depth? That sounds about right. Ugh, math. <laughs> Wait, 100, 100 meters? Two percent. Calculator confirmed. <laughs> we've got some winch fans and we've got some mapping fans. <laughs> Do the mappers watch the live stream when we're mapping? I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe. It's like the hipster test for mapping fans. <laughs> <laughs>
for the viewer wondering how many dives are left on this expedition, I, I believe <laughs> one. Um, I'll let Beth expand, um, but I, I think one, and I'm not sure when it's uh, planned next or if it's been planned yet. Has the next dive been planned yet, Beth? Or is it still? To be determined. To be t TBD. It'll be our last dive of the expedition, so we're waiting to see what we see on the end of today's dive to make our final decision. Roger. It'll either be here on King George or at New Casima. Someone wondering how old is the seamount? Uh, that's one of the things we're hoping to figure out um, with some of the rock samples that have been collected. Um, that's one of the primary objectives of this expedition. So if you've been following along, um, Val is the other uh, Coley scientist along with Beth heading this expedition and is a geologist and uh, bridge nav. Hold position, please. Thank you. It's hoping to find uh, find that out. And this is a flat top geo, Beth. King George is a flat top yeah. key. So it has been above sea level yeah. at one point. Yeah, so they were asking. Yeah, so it has been at sea level um, at one point. I can shift the iris a little if it's too blown out for you, too. Someone said they like to watch the mapping live stream. So yes, there are people out there who watch. Yeah, mapping. <laughs> there you go. Shout out to our mappers. Here's a brittle star question, Annabelle. I don't know, you might have to take to all Google, but we'll see, because I don't know. Uh, do brittle stars have simple eyes or photoreceptors on the ends of their arms like shallow water sea stars do? Could that explain the odd jumping behavior that is seen? Could that explain the what? The odd jumping behavior, I guess, maybe. The shooting stuff? The brittle stars? I don't know. They fall off the The ones that okay, only see them and they kind of like, wing. Oh, OK. Yeah. The shooting stars. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I will. Yeah, I don't consult. know if they have simple eyes or photoreceptors on the ends of their arms. That's a good question. There's not a lot of light here, so I would be surprised. Mm -hmm.
We've stopped our ship move, correct, Lynette? Another interesting geology question. Someone's wondering when on top of a seamount, is there evidence of where the caldera is slash was? Hmm. Uh, not on this flat top geo. Uh, it's been eroded away and covered up with a carbonate reef and then sunk. Um, so generally you cannot still see a caldera feature. Mm. Oh, I'm just not looking it up and realize that we're like further away. <laughs> I was like, where are we? What happened? <laughs> we're trying to get a wrap out. Yeah. <laughs> Any luck with the Biddle Star eyes versus photoreceptor info, Annabelle? Um, like with a lot of the questions, I go to Google for um, <laughs> the answers are scarce in the deep sea. Um, but give me a minute. <laughs> yeah, sure. While we're uh, sort of hovering for the moment, um, a little while back, um, there was a question that a viewer was interested in. Um, a little bit more about our sort of learning and, and I guess personal a little bit, um, but wondering um, whether this is your first time on Nautilus or your, f or your 40th. <laughs> it seems like you learned so much. What are you most excited to have learned so far on this cruise? Um, well, if that's a loaded question, I, that's a lot of different things there. I know. For me, it's just I don't know, it's been just super interesting to learn about the deep sea from someone who studied more like uh, coastal ecology and coastal policy. Um, I had never even thought I would be on a ship doing deep sea anything. So life is always full of surprises. Um, but it's been really great to sort of just think about the sort of uh, deep sea versions of a lot of the shallow water versions. So, you know, we see sea stars and fish and coral, and we know all of those also exist in shallower layers of the water column. So it's been just very interesting to see and learn about those. Um, and uh, learning about the ROV has been 
really cool and just seeing how it works and everything that it sort of takes to get it working and get it in the water and out and all the parts and all it, it's able to do. So a bunch of other things, but those are definitely some, some top for me. Ooh, can I go next, Shelby? You definitely can, Diane, please. So this is my first time on Nautilus. Oh yeah, this is my first time First too. time working uh, with an ROV. Um, I do a lot of other science support, ocean science support, I guess I should say. And um, this is the first time I'm getting to see animals in situ, like in their oh, habitat yeah. doing what these animals do. Mm -hmm. Like I have been a part of a lot of different sampling efforts. Um, but never gotten to spy on animals right. before. <laughs> it's incredible seeing them live in the moment. Um, yeah, so many incredible highlights, and it answers a lot of questions for me about like how these things feed, right. and how they eat, and how they move, and uh, what they're doing all day. So, yeah, that's uh, that's just a big overall general <laughs> highlight. That's awesome. Yeah, for me, I would sort of second what Diana is saying, just that I have never worked with an organism I can see with my eyes <laughs> without a microscope. Um, so that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And then I think the larger highlight for me is just seeing how this part of the scientific process gets done, yeah. like with sampling and deciding what's going to be sampled. And then watching Diane and her team kind of go into the lab and decide how they're going to preserve everything and thinking about how that is different for different species uh, is really interesting. And the part I'm looking forward to seeing most that I haven't seen yet is the shipping process, which we've talked so much about and oh, I have so much whoa, anticipation well. for. She's like, well, we got some fun surprises <laughs> for you in just a few days. As <laughs> soon as we finish these uh, dives, I'm sure um, we are going to be starting that uh, process of all the paperwork. Um, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, I will. Exciting time. <laughs> we'll be packing up our scientific samples. We've got a few biological samples and lots of rocks. Mm. Lots of rocks. So how many, many rocks? How many rocks are we at now? No, somebody keeps tally. Stones or stones of rocks. I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember what the weight that I, I can't remember what weight uh, Val has given us, but she's been playing around with different pounds. measurements. For those of you all who have listened to us before. Um, we've given you how many kilos of rocks we have. We've given you how many pounds. We've given you <laughs> stones of rocks that we have. So some fun different measurements for you to play with. And for the person asking who is speaking now, I will let Diane introduce herself. Ah. <laughs> I am Diane and science manager in training here on the Nautilus, my first cruise. And awesome. I am in the data logging position during the dives. Thanks for that. Rhett, do you want to share anything that you learned? Or I can repeat the question. I don't know if you're busy. Could you repeat the question? I sure me? can. Uh, basically, they were just, you know, wondering, you know, when we're on these dives in the control van, we all learn so much. So whether it's been your first time on Nautilus or your 40th time, what's um, maybe the coolest or most interesting thing you've been able to learn? Um, during the cruise. Oh, yeah. this this is my first time on Nautilus or any uh, <laughs> ship, actually. This is oh. my first time going out of sight of the shore for more than like a couple hours. Oh, um, job, so Brett. I've learned this a lot like, yeah. just about this general life on the boat yeah. and also about uh, running the cameras and some of the broadcast equipment uh, for Nautilus. Um, so it's been a big, fun learning curve for me in general. Cool. Nice. Can't believe our last dive is uh, tomorrow. No. I know. I feel like it was so hard like. No? Can I say hard no? <laughs> 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 it won't get me anywhere, but I can say it. You can How's say that? it. You can definitely say it. Thanks, Nobody's Shelby. gonna stop you. Appreciate you. We have a lot to plan for our transit home, like games. <laughs> oh, yeah. Charades. Uh, egg yeah. tossing games. Benthic fauna charades. Benthic fauna charades. charades. Or, okay. or boat charades. Packing of samples. 
Yes. <laughs> That could be a game. <laughs> <laughs> Put the rock in the box. <laughs> yeah. We have to get through our last week of interactions, and then we can play games. Oh. <laughs> Shelby, and works. our deliverables. <laughs> we got a lot, and we got to write reports. Yeah. Yes, we're not done. We're oh not no. done at all. <laughs> we got sample logs and dive reports. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> We got a couple more photo albums to put together and write up. <laughs> we'll we'll have things to do. And the cribbage to. tournament. The cribbage oh, tournament. Going has back been to the games. <laughs> She's like, let's get back to the fun <laughs> stuff. You can see where Annabelle's. <laughs> 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 no, just teasing you. Yeah. Right. How many interactions are you up to, Shelby? Oh. <laughs> Are you trying not to count? Us? <laughs> just me or all of us? Um, oh, or just you, I guess. Do you have yeah, your own either. count? I don't, I have not been keeping count. Um, we, ugh. she's got them scraped into the wall on it. <laughs> <laughs> They're really fun. Oh, They're really, really fun. We have yeah. to at least have a lot of them. be up to 80 or something. That's what's awesome. Uh, right what's a point. really funny question that a kid has asked you? Um, I don't know about funny, but I did an interaction with some students in the UK, and I just love their accents when they're that <laughs> little. And they were like, how many fish are in the sea? <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, you're so cute. Um, I was like, there's a lot of them in the sea. <laughs> we don't see as many as you think at this depth, but very cute question. I was, I was watching <laughs> an interaction <laughs> with um, Mal and I and Paul, uh -huh. and they got the question of like, why are different things in the ocean different sizes and everyone was like uh, uh well wh why is anything a different why? size i don't know they grow differently <laughs> yeah but then i was like thank you for your patience back row yeah no yeah worries. No, worries. Well, no worries at all all right well you want to look at something in the meantime why do we look at this little floaty while we're waiting for the fish to, or the uh, ship to spin up Zoom in on the fish, please. Oh, yeah. There it is. That's what we've been looking for this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and you finally Me found it. Is this a is that a gopher? Is it? Ew. Oh, I don't know. It no, maybe not. I don't think it is. We've seen no, this no. one before. Yeah, yeah, I always forget what it's called. It's not in my cheat sheet. Ooh. All right. Thanks. Trip. <laughs> Have we called in a ship's move? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We are moving. Two two zero. Great. <laughs> what? That's not what it was. Mm -mm. We've seen it before, I just don't remember what it's called. Beautiful rock. Very s smooth looking. Oh, that was it. Go back. Nope. One more. Or something like that. Maybe not. I thought maybe it was a Kumba, but I don't, when you looked at the image, that wasn't what it was. Right. If you want to come in a little bit on it, Lana, I 
think I can deal with it. Thanks, that's great. Hello. <laughs> Runaway zoom. Oh, I'm sorry. I gotcha. Okay, let me turn that off. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Nice, thanks. Can I get a reset, please? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Trevor, when you call for a reset, what are you resetting? I mean, I've been wondering this for a long time, and now I'm just going to, like, ask. I just recenter myself. Just asking myself for it. Oh. No, um, no. Lynette does that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so when he asks for a reset, so we have two different methods of knowing the location of Herc on the bottom. Um, one is the USBL. Go on. And that is an acoustic tool. Um, so there is a beacon on Herc, and there is um, a transceiver on the ship. So uh, we can send an acoustic signal back and forth, um, and we know uh, the sound speed in water, so we can figure out the location of Herc on the bottom. Um, and we get a pretty accurate position that way because we can use the ship's GPS um, because we have the beacon uh, um, that is mounted to the ship. The ship is on the surface, um, so we can get GPS. But we can't get GPS underwater, unfortunately. Um, so the other way that we measure the position of Herc on the bottom is with the DVL. It's a Doppler velocity log. Um, and that is another acoustic tool um, that uses the Doppler effect to determine we what direction soon? we're moving and at what speed. Go ahead on the fish. Um, but it drifts, that position drifts Bonk. over time um, because it's, you know, you. like any Thanks. tool, it's not 100% accurate um, for measuring direction and speed. Um, so over time it drifts from the true position and then when Trevor asks for a reset. Um, Can we get a zoom in on the rock underneath there? Yes. If possible. The micro nodules. I'm wondering if it's just carbonate debris from the coral reef. You should on porch light, please. And almost ready. Okay, you can zoom there. Okay, thank you. You Thanks. can wide. It's just debris. Thanks for that, Lynette. I have been wondering. Yeah, yeah. So when he asked for a reset, um, we're just re like resetting where the DVL thinks it is using the USBL position, which is a little bit more accurate. So USBL, the one that we deploy through the moon pool, yes, is exactly. a more accurate measurement of where Herc is. Yes. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Cool. Got a sample question. Somebody's wondering, um, what do you do with the rock samples after you study them? Um, I think some of them will go into a geological repository, mm -hmm. so um, future generations of geologists can look at these rocks. Mm -hmm. um, some of them will be... Do really cool ones go to like museums at all? Like if it's done being studied and it was something very interesting or a lot of good information came out of it or it's rare or something? Do you know if like Smithsonian ever gets stuff like that? Good question. Yep. Um, I think different universities hold their repositories in different ways. Mm. Like they may have display areas, yeah. but they may also have sort of a library in a way that you can, that they catalog all of their specimens. Cool. Yeah, so there's very limited sample analysis that's done on board. It's basically just a visual description. All the rock samples 
Uh, well, that's not true. The majority of the rock samples are going to the um, the archive at the Graduate School of Oceanography at University of Rhode Island. And from there, scientists from all over the world can make requests for samples. Out here on board the ships, we are subsampling some of the rocks already to send to collaborators for this expedition um, because they already know they have an interest in these rocks. Um, and then to your question, Shelby, mm -hmm. if there are just really fantastic specimens, mm -hmm. then a museum can make a request oh, okay. to the archive for those samples for educational purposes. Cool. Um, because we are working in the Papahanamoa Kuakea Marine National Monument, we're also thoughtful about the concept of repatriating samples mm -hmm. once they have shared their knowledge with us. Um, and so that's an active area of discussion as well about what that looks like. Got it. And also maybe trying to make some of these materials available specifically to museums and educational places in, in Hawaii. Hawaii yeah. um, that makes sense. Because of the uh, cultural and spiritual connection of mm -hmm. Native Hawaiian communities to to this region and the all of the materials of this region. That makes sense. For the viewer wondering what's the deepest we've been, I can't remember the exact number, but I know it was a bit over 3,000 meters um, at, I think it was Nootka Seamount. Um, Hercules can go to 4,000. Don't know if he's ever been all the way down, but um, Trevor, I think, mentioned a couple dives back that has been down to about 3,900 or so. Um, and at Atlanta or Argus, well, I don't know, at Atlanta, but I think Argus can go down to 6,000. Uh, but we have only been a little bit over 3,000 meters down on this expedition. Trevor, how did Hercules perform at that deepest depth when you brought it down? Same, yeah. Did it seem like you could go further? <laughs> go further? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can go until the bottle implodes. You shouldn't do that. But we don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. That's the main performance uh, effects you'd see, the lack of anything. <laughs> <laughs> it would be functioning fine and then sudden black. Yeah. <laughs> One of the main differences of working at those deeper depths is actually, I think, more like the choreography between Herc, Atalanta, and the ship. Mm. Totally. Because of the amount of tether in the water. You got to think much farther ahead, and yeah. if you're in more aggressive terrain, mm -hmm. you have to take it very slow to stay safe. Yeah, a lot of backwards movements if you want to actually try to sample. Yeah, if you rush by something and want to sample it, it can take two hours. Oh man, is there greater risk of entanglement of the tether when you're that? Deep? Greater greater risk of uh, surprise cliff bonks. Mm. So a, sl a cliff comes up that didn't show up in the multi-beam or oh. was steeper than expected, and by then you're already swung back. Yeah. You're basically just working on a longer pendulum, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you're already swung way behind the ship, the only thing you can do is speed up the ship. Yes, sir. counterintuitive, mm -hmm. but pulls Atalanta up. Uh, yesterday, at, I think it was 2,500 meters, we turned around and we we had passed this something they wanted to sample about 10 minutes before and round trip i think it took 52 minutes to get back grab it and then go again that yeah, sounds about right oh there's a chrysogorgid <laughs> yeah we haven't seen one in a little bit and they've just come back in review let's have a gander go ahead and zoom please i like gander <laughs> What's good for the goose is... Lynette, I'm wondering if we want to maybe <laughs> angle slightly north of Waypoint 9 so we can come along on the steeper northern like side that. as we get to Waypoint 10 instead of going over the flat part. What do you think? 
Did that make sense? Yes, just like that. Yeah. I don't think you're on SPL, on it. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Can I have a uh, polyp zoom, please? Oh, yeah. This is a lovely gander. That is an octo coral. Okay, the thank you. Cherry blossom tree ones. Totally. What yeah. are they called again? This is a Chrysogorgia. I believe it's a Flavescence. Thank you. Trevor, how deep has Argus gone? I don't know the answer to that. I know it can go to 6,000, but I don't know. It hasn't recently. We have some instrumentation on there that is only 4,000 meter rated. Okay. So we haven't taken that off and I haven't gotten super deep, but I don't know if it went deeper than four before my time. I can't remember, there's two things on Argus that are not uh, 6,000 meter rated. Oh, it's the really? sub-bottom profiler and something else. And I don't even remember what that other thing is. On Argus or Atalanta? Argus. Atalanta is fully 6,000 meter. Little workhorse. <laughs> <laughs> What's that little sea star up there? Someone's wondering why is everything looking more solid than it has other times, like not as much sediment and not as bumpy or rocky. We are also wondering that. <laughs> <laughs> Two crinoids attached to a Chrysogorgia. Um, fish. That's kind of part of our mission. With these dives, is to figure out the origin of these seamounts mm -hmm. and to figure out how they have formed and why. <laughs> and, and why? <laughs> and so, yes, part of that uh, analysis is looking at these rock flows and how they have moved from continuous flow to rubble to mm -hmm. hyaloclastite. Love it. <laughs> uh, and it came right off the tongue beautifully. Etc. <laughs> to try and analyze the um, <laughs> and, and figure out how these formed. Bridge nav. Can we move five zero meters to five zero, please? Thank you. Another Chrysogorgia here. This one that we're passing over. Yes. Okay. It looks spirally in the middle a little bit. It's, uh, yeah, Chrysogorgia, uh, what's the name of it? Magnus Spiralis. Is that the same as Iridogorgia? I was just wondering the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's Iridogorgia. Okay. Iridogorgia. Magnus Spiralis. Aridogorgia is, is a type of Chrysogorgia? Correct. Okay. And then that cherry blossom was also a type of Chrysogorgia? Or did Correct. I just make that up? Okay, Correct. cool. Yeah, it's a large category. Yeah, I was like, okay. That's a Chrysogorgia also, right there. To the left. And these top two. Yep. What, like, what's the Taxonomic level of Chrysogorgia is it phylum? What is it? <laughs> Family. 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 Hey, okay. a Chrysogorgia. Hey, another Chrysogorgia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh look! So we <laughs> know how varied they are. I mean, <laughs> we left behind those um, brown, yeah. yeah, hydrozoans and the white uh, scleractinians. So we've definitely changed coral community. 
during even this watch. Someone's wondering, does the oxygen concentration with depth have any significant effect on the manganese crust growth? It could. Um, these seamounts also haven't been static in their position in the water column. Uh, they were This seamount was once above the surface of the ocean, and then it was a, had a coral reef on top. And now it's at least 600 meters below the surface of the ocean, so it's moved through the oxygen different oxygen concentrations mm -hmm. over time. Right now we're in one of the lowest oxygen concentrations around this area, around mm -hmm. a thousand meters or so. What are we at? Right now we're at 14. Oh, There's shark. There's a nice looking shark. Oh. Ooh. Oh, look at that tail fan. Okay, right, you can zoom, keep it in frame. Nice. Oh, cute. Come be my friend, buddy. <laughs> so no, gotta go. Go into your hole. No. Oh, oh, not oh, that hole. That's that a bad one. hole. <laughs> That's a dead end. Yeah, so as we get to these shallower waters, we're probably going to see more, more fish, more sharks. All right. Bye, pal. And now there's another fish, right where the shark left off. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Another fish top left. Wow. Oh. Couple of them. Fish for days. Oh. And there's one between uh, Atalanta and Herc, too. Mm -hmm. Which way is the current going? Do we know? Uh, south. South? Okay. Yeah. Uh, someone said that shark may have been a cat shark. Cat. Meow. Cat shark. Oops, sorry. Sorry. Hey. I'm trying. <laughs> Looked like that one to me. But that's pretty <laughs> shallow. Or what is the purple zone again? Purple zone? Um, I'm going to look it up. We're looking at the, uh, the guide, oh. the animal guide. Oh, oh, the guide. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember how shallow that is. It's above a thousand for sure, I think. Hello, rock face. <laughs> Hello, Hercules. I think it's at the beginning of the guide. No, maybe not. I got you, Beth. Okay, 8,000 to 1,000. Okay, 800 to 1,000 is purple. Cool, Atlanta view yeah. right now. The shadow shrinks. Oh. So steep. I feel like I want to take a minute and appreciate the word cool. <laughs> That's the longest lasting slang word ever. Yeah, most consistent <laughs> too. I don't, it never oh, goes out of style. Can we get a zoom yeah. on the white puff? Go ahead, zoom. Oh, wait, never mind. It's just a Walteria. Now I see it. Oh, never zoom. Never mind, zoom. Aw, just a Walteria. Just one poor little Walter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Walteria. I know. We've seen a lot of them. We have. So I feel like easily identified. The word cool is my most frequently used slang word as well. Same as my grandparents. <laughs> I think it's the most like universal. Can it be considered slang? Hey, is that a crazy word? It's just a word now. <laughs> I don't know what slang means anymore. <laughs> Reading, getting back into pedantics and word definitions. Oh boy, <laughs> must be our third hour in the watch. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-breakfast. Yeah. yeah. Can we get a? Fish partial zoom? on this. Oh, sponge zoom. Yeah. Sorry, fish. You're cool yeah. too. Fish is lame. It's 
sponge is my friend now. Oh, this one might have, oh, let's hope. Uh, this one might have a shrimp. This is the kind of sponge a shrimp would live in. Indeed. If I were a shrimp, I'd live uh, in this shrimp sponge. apartment, for sure. <laughs> let's see, do we get lucky? Negative. Ooh, yeah, look at him. It was the last watch that saw that earlier, right? webbing over the top. Can you zoom in more? I know. Yeah, I can. How would the shrimp even get prickly. in? Just bust through? Oh, is there, a, is there a white one? The back top left? Mm, yeah, maybe. maybe. I see what you're talking Hard about. Hard to tell. Hard to tell, yeah. Okay, thank you. Cool view, though. How the shrimp gets in there is they get in there when they're small enough to fit, and they grow big enough that they can't escape anymore and live the rest of their lives in jail. Does it actually work out for them? Like, is yeah, that totally. Useful? There's enough flow. They just huh. get food funneled to them through the sponge. Well, wow, they don't have really to worry cool. about predation. Mm -hmm. Do they ever outgrow it? Like, do they get too big and get, like, smushed in there? <laughs> oh, weird concept. Aww. Or uh, or, or can they reproduce in there e either? Is that, like, evolution dead end, but good for the individual? I don't know how evolution, or sorry, how shrimp reproduction works. Yeah. It might not affect it. Huh. All right, so another Chrysogorge on the left. That looks like some... Small scleric tenons, the pink in the middle, Walteria on the right. So these pink corals have kind of disappeared for a while, but now they're back. Can we get a partial on one of them? On the pink one? Yeah. Or yep, go ahead. Oh, actually, I don't know that it's a scleric tenon. Maybe it is actually a um, hemichorallium. What are these holes in the rocks? Interesting. You can come wide. Thank you. Thanks. So many. It's like a line of holes. Interesting. Mushroom coral. Do we see any pinnipeds when we're in Honolulu? I don't remember seeing any. What no. is a pinniped? A seal? It's uh, a it's a group of animals like sea lions, true seals. Um, right. Thank you. You're the, welcome. I think the only native pinniped to Hawaii is monk seals, right? Hawaii monks? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't see any of those. No. We saw a sea turtle on our way out, though. Jeep. I think Justin was mentioning that he had seen some monk seals. Um, I forgot what island. Was it Midway? I, I think it, Midway does have some. Uh, they live out in the monument. Like uh, Midway is included in that, I believe. But, oh, that's um, so cool. So that's pretty cool. There's not very many of those uh, monk seals left. So is it time for a gauge them. check? I did a gauge check. I was looking at the retention was an hour and a half ago. Uh, I did a gauge check at, this time's all weird, three minutes ago. Can we get a partial ago. on this anemone? Okay. Uh, anemone? Did I anemone? not reset it? Shoot. I'm That's sorry. Okay. That's all right. You can zoom in, please. Thank you. You can come on. All right. It's all good. I was just trying to figure out the difference between this and oh, this, and now I understand. On yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Tension's retracted. Good one is. Let's zoom in on this one too, the mm -hmm. non-retracted one. Oh, I love these. Oh, are they retract? Yeah. Nice comparison. Hmm. All right. Thanks. They look like cartoon character hair. <laughs> <laughs> Like it should be on The Simpsons or something. <laughs> it does a little bit. <laughs> so we've got these brown corals coming back in. If we could get a couple um, partial zooms on the brown ones. Sure, yeah. See if they're hydrozoans again or if they're plexorids. This might be a good one. Yeah, it's the one I have in mind. Great. <laughs> 
Your mind reader. Oh, and actually there's something different down here that we'll have a look at also. Yeah, right. Okay, zoom in there, please. Yeah, so these are hydrozoans. Great. Mm -hmm. And then let's go down one. The rock texture is a lot smoother than I would envision, but that might just be because of the depth. And then these look like plexarids. Looks right, peachy, orangey. Yeah, thank you. Well, we've got both. A little bouncy down there. That Can might have a been reset, a Swiftia. Please? The Plex Sword might have been a Swiftia, Diane. Thank you. I just got a spam call in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. 2022. Nowhere is safe. Nowhere We're is safe. I bet astronauts get them in space. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you go. You can go to the core of the Earth and they would still call you. Thanks. Is it about your car's extended warranty? Here's an Aridogorgia <laughs> Bella. Center left. Is there different types of Aridogorgia? Yes. I didn't know that. What's another one aside from Bella? The Magnus Boralis. Magnus Boralis. And also, well, I guess those are the two, Bella and Magnus Boralis. Is that another Plexora there on the right going off screen? Wow, we've got a sunrise sure. happening out there. Oh, is it coming up? It's coming up. Yeah, so here you've got it again. Plexorid mm -hmm. and yeah. Hydrozoan. Best buddies. Haven't seen a black coral in a while, so that's what I'm keeping my eyes peeled for. Mm. It's interesting how But it might be just because of the depth. Yeah. So help me understand why my shoelace would come undone while I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Argus. Bobby Argus strikes again. <laughs> Trevor, can we get a current check, current direction check? Current check, as yeah. As we see all these fans oriented, oh, facing so to many. our left. Means I can tie my shoe. A lot of them yeah. look like the similar size too, which is interesting. Not much current. Okay. Thank you. Look at all these corals. This is crazy. <laughs> it's really beautiful in Atlanta <laughs> view, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that. What is happening there? Woo. That is wild. Wow, this is thick. It's like a garden. Yeah, and it just keeps going. Yeah. Bridge nav. Can we have another step, five zero meters, two six five, please? Can we make sure we get a still cam image of this extensive hemichorallium? Oh yeah, I've got lots. And, uh, what is that, an anthemaster? Are the, sorry, are the pink ones hemichorallium? Or they're, yes. Okay, yep. got it. And then the anthemaster soft coral and the uh, Orangish pink. And our favorite Geo did it. Oh my goodness. Fuzzy hat.
question. Somebody wants to know why we're using Atalanta and not Argus for these dives. Oh. And what's the difference between them, if any? Ooh. Um, we are using Atalanta because Argus was having a little bit of an issue with its thruster controllers. And so that is going to get troubleshooted and fixed. And so Argus is hanging out on deck right now. Fortunately, we have Atalanta as a backup. So we've been using that since the beginning of this expedition or this mission. Um, and then what's the difference between the two? Uh, Atlanta's uh, lighter. Atlanta's smaller. Ah, oh, Trevor's grinning over here like, yeah, Ashton, what is the difference between the two? He's like, pop quiz, <laughs> pop quiz. Hey, I've seen Argus like twice. Ever. Yeah, um, <laughs> hard question. <laughs> what else? I think it has a larger camera that's it a bit does. more advanced. Argus has the same uh, main camera as Hercules. Okay. I'm told. That would be nice. Um, Single tier. Does it have more advanced like multi beam? Like ledge might be or it's, it's got a side scan. No, a side neither of the ve none of the vehicles have multi beam right now. Just Kirk does have scan. one that can go on. Okay. Uh, but it's not on right now. Can we get a partial on the sponge and yeah. the underhang? The under Overhang. sponge. The under oh, wow. sponge. Oh wow! Look at that Ugh. crab. Off to the right. Do you want Whoa. under sponge light? Uh, I'm gonna try to look up at it. Okay. I don't know. I'm tired of looking mm -hmm. down on sponges. Under sponge. Okay, zoom in the under sponge. <laughs> oh, that crab is intense. Yeah, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Is this a rosalid? What do we think this is? I might have to peek around a little bit. Are you plectilid, maybe? I try to peek. Okay, yes. that's great. Thanks. Did you want to peek around a bit? No, I meant at the guide. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Come wide. Then let's have a look at the crab just to our right. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Back in. This Please. crab is scary a little bit. It's so <laughs> spiky. Oh my god. Punk, I thought it had like crab. a billion arms, but no, it just oh is my spiky. Very spiky. Yeah. Maybe is that a type crab? of king crab? Don't want to step on that. It might be. I'm not okay. sure. Okay, thank you. Thank come you. Wide. That's up. It looks like there's another one of those crabs just to the right. Mm. Yeah, maybe you plectil it on that sponge. Fourth graders want to know how much pressure is on Hercules right now. We're at 990 meters roughly. And you increase in one atmosphere of pressure every 10 meters. So we're at roughly 99 atmospheres. I'll let Trevor convert that to <laughs> pounds per square inch. <laughs> Exercise for viewers at home. <laughs> 986 times 14.7. That's so many PSI. So we're seeing some bottle brush Chrysogorgia in the dusty pink. Hemichorallium in the baby pale pink the mushroom coral going by in the orange pink Walteria sponges in white there's a sea star off to the top right we think these yellow ones might be plexorids but we probably need to get a tighter shot just to confirm which ones it's fine you can keep going I know we're keeping going so we need to stay on the move. We're getting to another little flatter spot here. Do you want us to speed up for this flatter spot? Yes, please. Okay. We can go back to 0.4 for a couple hundred meters. A couple of these yellow crinoids attached. Yeah. Yeah, there's a whole plethora of things crusted right sponge here. here. Now somebody made a joke. 
Well, y'all have a lot of fans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In the so world and fans. on this rock. <laughs> Ailing sponge. Ailing sponge. Somebody did the pressure math and they put an answer. They said 1,455 PSI. Nice one. So towards the, more towards the start of the dive, it would have been like the weight of a Toyota Corolla balanced on a quarter. But <laughs> oh my gosh. If, you, if you covered Hercules entirely in quarters and then Entirely in Toyota Corollas. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. I'm just trying to picture it covered in Toyota Corollas. That is such a great visual. It would only take like three Toyota, two and a half Toyota Corollas to cover her. I don't know. <laughs> All cut up and then like, I don't know. Into tiny little tubes. You gotta squeeze them. <laughs> like the Nutella tube? Uh. <laughs> Corolla tube. Corolla tube. I am not going to miss Nutella tube. I'm not going <laughs> to miss Nutella tube either. Uh, I'm going to miss Nutella I've tube. I've never liked it. <laughs> Nutella <laughs> or Nutella tube? Nutella. Okay, fair. So for viewers Where does home? somebody source this? Oh, go ahead. I'm <laughs> sorry, going. Annabelle. It's a commercial product, right? Usually yes. not yeah. sold in stores. It's Nutella in a large bag tube yeah. okay. not in a jar you do that we have some on board yeah they sit on the double table double area mm -hmm. here oh okay look at all these fans so many fans <laughs> that was just a, a, a great pun it was I'm, I'm a big simple fan. but effective yeah so happy with that <laughs> thank you viewer Someone's saying that can we get a partial on this sponge? Yes, we can. In front of the coral. The super big spiky crab um, was a lithotus, that longest spina. Just what I'm. It's in the Okeanos guide. Mm -hmm. Okay, zoom in on the squat lobster. Lithotes, maybe. Mm. Like yep. I don't know. All right, and that the sponge. Is what I just pulled up. I actually. think is a Fred Aka, at least at the bottom. It looks like there's actually two different sponges here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. it does actually look like two sponges. The other one oh, is yeah. that Colas something, Colasema, with the attached um, little pink encrustations. Okay, you can come out. Thank you. The lasers are 10 centimeters apart for the person asking, watching. Can we get a partial that includes both the whiter coral and the brown coral? Yeah, we could probably even include the pink one. Oh yeah, we can include the pink one too. Okay, partial zoom, please. Okay, the top one. If we can get a actually a closer polyp zoom on the one with the lasers. Uh, the white yeah, one. Go ahead. Okay, so this is looking like a zoanthid yeah. attached to something else. I think. Okay, you can come wide on that one. Do you want me to go all the way or stay here? This is good. And then the one at the bottom looks like a hydrozoan. Thank you. Thanks. If the viewer uh, is still watching, who's wondering about just what outside looks like. What's our ship's move currently? 
uh, heading? 265. Okay. Yeah, we can maybe start angling towards uh, waypoint 10. Okay. Thank you. Satellite uh, feed three or, yeah, feed three um, now has a view of the bow, um, which has some bird friends hanging out. Can't quite tell bird where they friends. are from this thing. I mean, from this far away and inside, but. Probably albatross. Yeah. Well, we've been seeing more. Um, some boobies. Boobies Maybe and yeah. shear waters. Ooh, true. Yeah, um, yesterday we saw a red-footed booby, which we had not seen on the front end of our cruise. We had seen the brown and the masked. So, could be one of those. Yeah. Uh, a week ago, we saw, Steve and I saw a Jaeger. Did you really? You yeah, saw a Jaeger? we did. Is a Pomeranian oh. Jaeger. Yeah. So cool. It took a took a while to figure out what it was. It's um, it's actually not on range maps for this far out in the ocean. Yeah, but, I bet not. But it um, it is uh, marked as non-breeding in Hawaii uh, huh. and not connected to anything, which means it's got to cross over somehow. So. Yeah. So that's a like migrating through or just you know. So they breed in the Arctic, um, yeah. and then they they do migrate, um, but also I think. And this is just my my un vague understanding. I think that they also are kind of cosmopolitan in the meantime uh, across the ocean, uh, especially the Pacific. So um, I think they just kind of go where they feel like, and then they go back to the Arctic when uh, when it's time to breed. So we have a oh, geodididay yeah. sponge at the bottom of the frame, and also by the lasers, a really big one. Mm. Oh, and a large sea star if you pan left. That is big. Mm. Yeah, it's like, what, 30? You can see it from Atlanta. Yeah. Wow. So if I'm not mistaken, we started seeing a lot of those geo today sponges yesterday when we were at the pinnacle, which is right about this depth. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. There's a big Come fur on. hat on the left too, but yeah. mm -hmm. we're, we're a little past it now. But Yeah, that's the geo did it a day. Right. Yeah, so exactly right, Diane, that we started. No, oh, there's two fish. Um, Yesterday's dive at Nootka Seamount, just further north of here. Uh, as we ascended shallower of 1,000 meters, we started to see these uh, fuzzy hat sponges in abundance. We're seeing that again here at King George as we're coming shallower of one kilometer of water depth. Yeah, it's like a cutoff point, and then all of a sudden they're everywhere. That's just where it's been observed. So an Arrigogorgia bella coming into the center of the frame there.
two Altaria sponges behind it, the one on the left looking healthier than the one on the right. A little fish at the bottom. Yeah, a little fish. Ooh, nice shot. Switching to auto iris for a second. It's a anthomastis coral that just went down to the center of the frame. And Orangish pink color. Can Bridge we get a snap. snap zoom on this yellow coral, please? Sure. Can we have another step five zero meters to five zero, please? Thank Go you. Go ahead. Ooh. Pretty. The partial. Uh, Push in a little closer on that, as if possible. If you need more, I can put reposition. Um, I think that's okay. Okay, come wide, please. Keep that image in my mind while I'm trying to figure out where it is. I believe it was a plexord with its polyps retracted. I love the Walteria rabbit ears off in the distance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up the upper left. Oh, a Victor Gorgia. We haven't seen one of those in a while. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. That's in purple. A lot of fuzzy hats. Rock. Want to do a zoom on the Victor Gorgia, please? Yes, please. Go ahead. Oh, that's a pretty one. There's a lot happening in that little space. Look at this rock. You can stay in. Um, if you can uh, go back to the Victor Gorgia, Ooh. Ooh. because there's a hard coral underneath it. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, it looks zigzaggy. Yep. Little uh, is that a sea star right there under the bottom, the white one? Yep. There's a sea star. Shrimp. All kinds of stuff. Great. Thank okay, you so much. Thanks. I'm going to zip for a minute, get a little more in the I believe that's another bank. Analepsamia. Could also be a madripora, both hard corals. Is this worth uh, eDNA? I don't think so. Okay. Bunny ears. Somebody's wondering how close are we to land? That's a good question. Are we? Have we come back enough that we're not as close to Alaska anymore? Are we? Yeah, still we're closer to Hawaii. Now we're closer to Hawaii. Yeah. The closest land to us is part of the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands. It's just a little bit of land above water, not much. <laughs> um, I forget if it's Le Sun or, I don't have to look, give me a second. Uh, the closest inhabited island would be uh, Kauai and Nihiao. Nihiao. Yeah, Nihihau. Ever to Gorgia Magnusporalis coming into view. Uh, yeah, the closest isle, closest bit above land to us would be Laysan Island, also known as Kamole. Mm. Uh, the Maro Reef and Gardner Pinnacles and Lysiansky Island, all part of the Northwest Hawaiian Island chain, all contained within the Papahanamoa Kuakea Marine National Monument.
Thanks, Rhett. Appreciate you, Rhett. Yeah, thanks. And welcome, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Bridge nav. Can we have another step? Five zero meters to five zero, please. Thank you. I wonder if this is a true little pinnacle in Atlanta sonar, just a small one in that flat spot. You can see beyond it, so let's find out. Yeah. Not like the start of the dive anyway. I kind of want to go in there. Ooh. I do too. Can we go? Are these yellow? Green. No. Yeah, can we get some Green partials yellow. on <laughs> these yellow corals, please? Or yeah, we can. Good morning, Jeff. Beautiful Victor Gorge. You all yeah. set to go there? Yeah. All right. You can, uh, you can zoom in there, please. Yeah, we can add the squat lobster too. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see the Victor Gorgias? These look like um, plexarids, I believe, the yellow ones. Purple is Victor Gorgia. The pink one that looks like it has zoanthids on it. Not sure what the underlying structure is. OK, we can go right. wide. Keep Thank going. You. The Thank colors you. there are lovely. Yeah, that's a yeah. beautiful shot. And we have the geodididae sponges cool. that look like is it like in the little pocket there? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Got some Walteria sponges on the rock cliff face to our right. That's a really cool Atalanta shot in V2. Mm -hmm. There's one of the Geodidae sponges coming right up into the center of view. Man, this is their spot. It's a lot of them. <laughs> it's pretty wedge shaped. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the fact I would Smash coral, I would try to squeeze in there a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe not today. There's a fish, just below lasers. A little bit more current here. Can we get a partial zoom on the rock? Go ahead and zoom. Hmm. Looks yeah, OK, thank what you. What is that brownish right. color on that pinnacle? I don't know. Unknown brownish. OK. So there was a little, little pinnacle there. Yep. And mm, I'm gonna go this way. Yeah, it's interesting how the sorry about the aggressive spins here. Don't quite match our bathymetry. Whee! Sorry about the pulling. Oh, these <laughs> look like stolonifera. Can we look at this purple? Yes, we can, and the red on top too. Oh, it's like a whole little mixture here of what looks like white stolonifera, yeah. purple stolonifera, and then I'm gonna start sure over here red. on the right, and we'll. Make our way down. Wow. Okay, you can zoom in, please. On this white fluffy stuff. What is white fluffy? <coughs> is that a Walteria? Uh, so is I believe so. Yeah. yeah, I think we're looking down on it, Kay. directly mm. down. And then yeah. Yeah. the stuff attached can you come down to the delta, rocks please? is the Stolonifera. 
you can look, find that out on RobNav. Uh, port's fine. Can we come wide again? Thank you. I'd like to get a look at this leggy red coral here. Yeah, okay. I can make my way down there. Can you come down in Delta, please? Me. Yeah, coming down in Delta will help that. Uh, it's up to Beth. I can't hear your conversation. Do you want me to hold off on a move? Oh, no. Let's keep moving. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We Zoom got in on ground the red to thing, cover. Sure. We'll play catch up after this. Yeah. So I'm thinking this is Swiftia. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, come wide. Beautiful shots. Thank you. Can we get a partial on these sponges too while you've got them right in the center? Uh, what's, what do you mind zooming on? Oh, it's okay. Uh, just okay. these sponges. Oh, yeah. Wow, that Let's is go, a beautiful Let's go to this rock. purple stuff. Oh, my gosh. I gotta go. This is gorgeous. Okay, wow. go ahead, Jeff. Oh, that's purple. Beautiful, beautiful. That's not Victor Gorgia. No, no this is stolen in Oh. The whole beautiful lavender lilac garden. Yeah. Is it two different types, the dark purple and the lighter? All sorts of good stuff. Okay, come wide, please. I got to go. Yep. Let's keep going. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, really beautiful. I love the color combos. Yeah, that was incredible. Thank you. You can lock your heading in 225. Okay. I will stay there. Coming up on Delta. Yeah. Ooh. Looking for you. Yeah, you can stay there. I'm going okay. down slope. I gotta go the right way, though. Turns wow. out, because of this. Yeah. Still in if we're our type of yeah. soft coral or related? Yeah, uh, they're an oct coral. Okay. Yes, so a type of soft coral. There's a good, a good bit of current here, too. I'm getting pushed, actually. Yeah, I could never what try direction? to find you. You trying to come back to the ship, Trevor? You betcha. I'm trying to get ahead of Atalanta. <laughs> we used up our entire piggy bank on that zoom. Okay. That was worth it, though. That was yeah. amazing. The amount of the abundance of animals, the color palette, uh, the things. Very different. Yeah. I would like yeah. frame that. Yeah, that me rock too. picture me and too. put it on a wall. Yep. Maybe I will. <laughs> when I get home. <laughs> Very different All rock right. texture over here. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right, now we're cooking. Here we go. Looks like a little All right. talus slope here. You can get your heading, whatever gets me in view. I got you back. And I'll take a reset too, please. Can we put high pack on channel three, please, Jeff? So I'd say the current's going 135 now, which doesn't really surprise me based on the huh, bathymetry. Okay. Definitely left to right. I'm having a hard time even just spinning to get you in view. Left to right. I think it's right to left. You think it's right to left? Yeah. I'm driving right into it right now. Ugh. Okay, then maybe you're just pulling Well, oh, I've definitely been pulling you this whole time, yeah. Well... <laughs> you have been. Oh, there's a Chana Cops, or the other thing that looks like Chana Cops to our left. The gray. The Look, I come off, I stop fighting the current for a sec, and I go, like, south. Yeah, what was the one with the boots? Oh, Lolo. Trying to Started with an L? Yes, it Lofa did. Sladenia. Mm. Yeah, with the boots. That's the good way to remember. <laughs> little. Which we also saw yesterday, once we got up to these shallower depths. <laughs> 
So different seamount, similar biogeography. Oh, someone has a question about the. So the net. What is our current ship heading move or moves uh, heading for our ship's moves? Two five zero. Okay. Yeah. So we can. Let's just get us angled up to go from waypoint ten to waypoint eleven. Yep. Thanks. A uh, question about the fuzzy hat Sponge Geo <laughs> did today. Yeah. Um, they're wondering, is the brown beard part of the sponge, uh, actually a part of the sponge, or some other creature that has a symbiotic association with the sponge? It's, it's all part of the sponge. Seems to be part of the sponge. Yeah. Is that a seat? No. That's a Chrysogorgia. Is that a Chrysogorgia? In the center of the God, frame. Look at it, it's, oh. it's breezy down there. It's getting blown over. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Something in bubble cam just swam into a hole. Oh. Cool. Uh, Chris thinks it was a shark. He just pointed that out. Wow. So the current's going this way. Atalanta will spin this way, too, because the current acts on the tether. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, someone sort of has a, I guess, a current question in relation to nutrients um, looking at our position on the map they're saying that we appear to be in between a series of peaks forming a channel between them and do you think this plane is providing a smooth flow of nutrients hence the high population of fauna I don't know what, what? I'm Wait sorry, I had my headphones off. Sorry. No, you're good. Another question. <laughs> um, someone's, I guess, they're looking at high pack, and they're saying, "Look at your pos looking at the position on the map that uh, we appear to be in between, in between a series of peaks forming a channel between them." And do you think this plane is providing a smooth flow of nutrients, hence the high population of fauna? Uh, yeah, where there's current, there's food. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily need to be nutrients, but. Anything. All right, the next ship moves we can do slower. All right, we're getting back into an area with some broken pillows. Let's do point three knots. Okay. Bridge, nav. Can we move five zero meters bearing two three five speed point three knots? Can we get a partial on this Thank white you. coral, please? Yes, we can. Okay, zoom in, please. Pretty far away, sorry. Oh, it might actually be a sponge, not a coral. What is this? No way. No, it is <laughs> no. not. Is this not a coral? <laughs> what is this? Is it a hydrosome? Uh -huh. What is it? Uh, okay, you can come wide. Thanks. Sorry about the crabbing, I'm fighting current. Okay. Just another one of those white, bushy 
which I guess would be a primnoid. So I'm not sure which one. Some really healthy Walteria there. Fluffy. Oh, somebody's saying that we are their favorite team to watch. Oh. Thanks. We appreciate it. Oh, and it is. <laughs> and Can you come um, down Delta, please? Yeah. Are any of us problem. coming back to the Nautilus in the future? There's a lot of people in the front row that'll be coming yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. See ya, last cruise. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you pan left to that white yeah. coral there? Can we get a partial on that, please? Sure thing. Okay, go ahead there. Those look like zoanthids to me. Okay, you can come wide. Okay, thanks. Samia Rostrata. To add to that person's question, um, there are opportunities for people to come back in various ways. Uh, for example, as a science communication fellow, you can come back as a lead science communication fellow. Um, a lot of interns that have interned <laughs> with Nautilus um, have come back several years after as contractors. So it's definitely common. Yeah, I don't have any scheduled uh, revisits to Nautilus, but you never know. Mm -hmm. Never say never. Four of the six ROV pilots either are or were interns. So if you want to learn ROVs and get some experience, internships, guys out there. And Diane is a science manager in training, so one would envision yep. coming back again. As uh, <laughs> potentially. I have nothing scheduled at the moment. We'll see if they'll have me. If not, it's been an amazing jaunt, and thank you. But if you like our shift so much, where all these uh, dives get archived, so you can just <laughs> re-watch them. <laughs> oh, I might re-watch this one. For it's your amusement. <laughs> like both of our watches. Like we had all the swimming things and all the acrobatic sea cucumbers and lobsters this morning. And then we've had like uh, coral gardens for days mm -hmm. on this part of our watch. Really spectacular. Yeah, and if really you watch cool. it on double speed, we'll all sound like chipmunks. <laughs> oh, 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 even better. <laughs> if you're curious as well, just about any watch Fish. on Nautilus Live, um, the current watch is always listed at the bottom of the page, and you can click on anyone's picture just to learn a little bit more about them and why they do what they do and why we do what we do, I guess, and where we went to school and some opinions on things and all of that if you're just curious about people on watch. Hmm. Yeah, maybe somebody can explain that to me, why I do what I do. Yes. <laughs> great. Overhang? Yeah. Ooh, look at that. that so when the wind catches, or the current catches at Atlanta, is it heavier in the tail? So it's usually pushing the tail end? Yeah. Is that how I should think about it? Yeah. Okay. You'll start, you'll start heading up into facing the current. 
Oh, okay. Facing the, yeah, facing into the current, I should say. Ashton, did you almost just say wind? I did say wind. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't almost. <laughs> Someone was talking about the ROVs flying earlier. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I mean, they it. do. That is what they do. <laughs> I, I refer to it as flying. This is yeah, flying, flying an ROV. Flying. I yeah. probably also refer to being on a ship as sailing. We're yeah. On a sailing ship. We Can we get a sailing partial on the white? Coral again. This was this See guy up front here. Still this Thorella. Go yes. ahead and zoom. Is that prop wash or is this actual current? That's actual current. I was wow. wondering that too. Looks wow. like so has it picked up a little it's bit? I guess blistering. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, blistering. Blistering okay. currents. Blistering winds. Thank you. Thanks. What did we decide that was, Beth? I never got the idea. Is that a tiny Thorella. Ursula behind Thorella. it? T H. Too late. Too oh, slow. Ursula. R E L L A. It's a primnoid. It's right here. Okay, got Tarella. it. Beth, are we planning to take any more eDNA samples before our watch ends, or no? Um, I don't know. That there's no set determination on when we collect them. It's just when we are in abundance of new communities. Mm -hmm. Only time will tell. Roger. So we're just at 900 meters. So a good way to visualize the amount of effect of the current on the tether yeah. is the tether with daisy chain is probably, I don't know, an inch and a half in diameter. Yeah. Probably an inch for tether and half an inch for the recovery line. And it's 30 meters or 100 feet long, so 1,200 inches. So if you do the math there, it ends up being about half of the area of a sheet of plywood. So imagine trying okay. to hold a sh four by eight sheet of plywood in the in the breeze, let alone in the current, and how much effort that would be, how much force that would be. Yeah, and that's what you're fighting with. That it's pretty so, significant. Yeah, of course, fluid dynamics are going to be a lot more complicated than that, but it's a ballpark estimate. <laughs> so it weather vanes. So the front of Atalanta points towards where the current is coming from. Weather vane, yeah. Okay. <laughs> current vane. Current vane. Current yeah. vane. Current vane. Current is weather. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see weather for sure. Uh, if you were wondering, is there ever any concern that geological discoveries could be potentially mined for mineral resources in the future and would therefore destroy the biodiversity? Uh, well, if um, you've been thinking about where we are actually exploring inside Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, which is a protected conservation area. Um, there is a lot of things you cannot do um, in a protected and conservation area, so. Hold on one second, Shelby. Yeah. Um, front row, we might want to try to collect this white fluffy uh, Torella. Okay. So if, yeah, if we could. Right side or left side bridge of the lasers? Nav. Uh, pro the left one probably looks better. Whichever one you think is easier to sample, given Kay. the setup. Hold position, please. Do we think this is Thank slurpable? You. Might need or to or bring the ship back. Yeah, okay. that's what I was wondering. Yeah. We need to do that. As soon as they are holding position, we can bring them back. Okay. And can you please drop a waypoint? Maybe after a reset? And then uh, we'll be able to find it again. There okay. might be a round also, so if we need to come off and while we're waiting for the yeah, ship. Yeah, totally. Let's While the ship's uh, fighting to hold position, I'm just going to come off. We've got a waypoint there. Maybe we can find another one. Is that one the same? Yeah, Up the above. one at the top Yeah. Is also one. Not the pink one, but the Not white one. Not the pink one. one, yeah. You think like three zero meters? Well, let's see. While we're 
It'll be a quick ship move once we ask for it, so why don't I just quickly check to see if there's others up here. Give me maybe two minutes. Yep. Feel a little bit of heave up here at the top. Anything up here? We do a little wiggle. Maybe some of these over back in the background. I don't know. Not right here in the foreground now. Yeah, no. Okay, I'll go over there. Check them out. Yeah, there's one up at the top of the frame. There is one? Oh, that is one? Oh, yeah. good. And I think we will not have to come back. Okay. Because we're still finding them top left of the frame again. Yes. Okay, Adelant is still swinging, so I'd like to keep chasing it. Yeah, there's several to choose from in the field of view here. Right on. So Chris Kelly is confirming your sightings there, Beth, and also I've asked him if it's slurpable, and he says a snip and slurp would work. Snip okay, again, remember that there is corals in the slurp hose. Yeah. So that may impact the decision on whether to slurp or not. Yeah, so Chris, there's some of those pink hard corals that we sampled earlier might still be stuck in the uh, slurp hose. So if we're worried about that damaging Look the collection. Look waving in the breeze. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. Is it all of these white fluffy things? They're all the yes. same things. Oh. Yes. All right. They're very abundant. Can, and we'll probably want to get an eDNA sample while we're doing this too. Yeah, Roger. Oh, run away tilt. Run away. Run away tilt. Okay. Um, Come back. I think right here should be fine. Without a ship's move? Without a ship's move, yeah. Okay. Or maybe I'll go one more, one more up. But yeah, no ship move required. If that was the only one back there, we would have needed a ship's yeah. move. Okay. But this is fine. Okay. Yeah, we've got several to choose from on the wall ahead of us. Yeah, totally. I'm trying to find a place that I can land facing into the current as well. Uh, hmm. It is really ripping down it there. It is. Yeah, from ripping having almost no current, current to this, it's pretty wild. Pretty spicy. So <laughs> top of frame, <laughs> middle, is that it? Yes. Yep. Okay. I'd like to go for that one. So we can snip and put in the box would be preferable, or we can slurp. He said he can deal with that too. Okay. I guess we Whichever are approaching the end-ish of the dive, getting close to it. So let's make sure to get some stills before we. Oh yeah. Do anything. Uh, that's not right. That's not what I want to do. Crash, boom. So we are facing northwest. Seems the current is coming right at us. I'm kind of sheltered in behind this rock, maybe. Yep. Don't you crawl forward now. Okay. The shrimp is like, I'm ready for my close up. <laughs> We're not, we're not coming for you. Sorry. Hmm. Okay, we're going to snip and slurp. We can uh, either we can snip and put in the box would be preferable, or we can Kay. snip and slurp. Forward whichever. box? Uh, no, starboard box. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't think no. we can do that with this current. Okay. Look at it going by the arm there. It is. Let's yeah. do a snip and slurp then. Yeah, Kay. and we want this one up here, not right. the one down here. Okay, Roger. That's slurp two. Slurp two. Slurp All right, two. Ashton, right. can you line me up on that, please? Yeah. And can we get the slurp, slurp canister in channel three, please, Jeff? And it takes a while. There we go. Yeah, it might take some time. Oh, fighting. but we're in the low digits, so that's nice. All right, so we got okay. this guy. Lots of room there. I can snip and slurp. Okay. All right, Jeff, can you come in slow, please? And can we also get a, um, a zoom? Oh, sure, yeah. yeah once Why we're don't I just uh, get these out of the way? 
And then we can do, let's see if I can risk a tip up, down, up, down, up. Perfect. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. That's beautiful. Got it. And polyps too, might as well, while we're here. Beautiful. Yeah. That's great. Gorgeous. Thank you. Okay, come out, please. And good there. You might not even have to slurp it. You can just put it in the hose and it'll get pushed up by the current. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, eh? Holy. Just confirming. Slurp two, please. Yeah, yeah. slurp two. Slurp two is lined up. So this is a great shot of the coral cutter How's manipulator this? arms. I so like it. Happy there? Okay. Here we go. Special design to have some plastic tubing to hold it gently with a little cutter below. Okay, come wide, please. And can you line bubble up on the yes. on nozzle? The, do you like this angle okay? Yeah, and zoom in, please, on bubble. So the slurp tool is kind of like a underwater vacuum cleaner. Okay, zoom in, please, Jeff. I'm bringing slurp up to 50%. Uh, yeah, stand by. Okay, stand by. Uh, can I get more? Yeah. Okay, a little more in there, please, Jeff. Good there, thanks. Is this a coral? Or okay, you can start the suction now. Yes. Yeah, coral. Yes. Okay. okay, we're at 30%, going up to 50. Yeah, 50 is good. Okay, we're at 50. Maybe 60. All right, we're at 60%. Okay, so a piece of coral came nice. out. Yeah. Okay, come wide, please, Jeff. And now I'm watching in channel three to see the sample we just took, try to come through. We also have a piece of the hard coral that we collected earlier that oh, yeah. made it through. There it goes up the tube. Hope you saw that on the Herc Zeus. Three, two, one. In the jar. Oh. <laughs> Do you want me to come up on section? It's at sixty percent. It's on the way. Okay. Do we need hmm. to jostle it at all? No, it's past the jostle stage. I saw okay. it go past the light in the star or the right side of uh Herc oh, Zeus. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm, okay, maybe, yeah, maybe up more. Okay, we're at 80% now. Okay, maybe 0%. Okay, 0%. Let's leave it there for a second, see if it um, okay. falls down the tube. There it is, going down the tube. Ah. See ya. Okay, I don't know, 70, 80, whatever, some percent. Okay. You're seeing this in the Herx oh. camera? Herx Zeus, yeah, the yellow hose. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything right now. Nothing. Hmm. Well, hmm. it's in the tube for sure. There's just some pluggage. Pluggage. Is it worth trying to jostle now that it's back out in the tube? No, it, so the, the vertical part, Yeah. the connection from that to the handle goes way to the back of the vehicle and out. That's okay. the service loop. So if it made it past my zone, then there's nothing else I can do from yep. down here. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, so it's up in the up in the stuff somewhere, so we can just stop the slurp and okay. leave it there. I, I'd recommend not stop. using the slurp anymore. Okay, no more slurps. And we'll just no put a note slurp. that we have a sample in the slurp tube. Yeah. Yeah. Combo of having stuff already stuck in there when we started, and then there was stuff stuck in there when we started. Possibly was it that. The, or the pink you look, coral. Yeah, you see the pink coral that's see in that's the slurp in canister. The oh, I right think you meant the dive. Oh no. Yeah, Roger. Okay. Uh, cool. Well, then we'll. 
I guess we could just leave the jar there. It's the same as flush at this point, so. Yeah, okay. We want to collect an eDNA sample, oh, yeah. please. Thank you. You did say that. I promptly forgot. It's okay. That's going to be Niskin 4. Niskin 4. And we might want to, do you think you can come off bottom a little bit and do it without getting yeah, smashed into something? I think so. Okay. Yeah, just so we get a little bit more exposure. Can I get porch light, please? Yes. Thank you. So this is Christopher jumping in for Shelby at SCF. Hi. Um, Force talk, maybe? Probably being force talked. Who what? You have to ask. Happy here? Yeah, this is good. Okay. We're about three meters off bottom, but that's kind of a, a rough approximation considering the topography. Okay, pulling Niskin. Niskin pulled. Niskin has been fired. Nice yeah. work. Uh, we have a question coming in. Oh, you want to? When Trevor is ready, Lynette, we can go ahead and resume the ship's move. Re towards okay. we'll that 11, please. Or 10, whatever we're at. Okay. I'm ready. Bridge nav. Can we move five zero meters two two zero, please? Thank you. So we think that that's uh, part of the reason we wanted to collect that sample is that it has been observed in other parts of the Pacific Ocean, but not convincingly at this depth uh, in this part of the Pacific. And so our scientists ashore are interested in getting a specimen to confirm its range. It looks like there's a fish in the top right hand view of the camera. Hi. And uh, we wanted to get the DNA sample there too because that was a new observation of that species as well. Hopefully we can capture that in the environmental DNA sample. We have a question about uh, whether we're concerned that our geological discoveries could put, be potentially mined for mineral resources in the future and destroy biodiversity here. Um, so uh, we are working right now in the Papahanaumoa Marine National Monument. Uh, mineral resource extraction, extraction is not an allowable activity in the monument. So this exploration that we're doing and understanding mineral resources here uh, is not uh, expected to lead to resource extraction that would damage biodiversity. That's part of the reason that the monument exists, to protect biodiversity. I think but it can inform. Uh, we are interested in collecting samples for understanding the mineralogy of the crust that form on these seamounts to understand more broadly um, if the predictions of where high mineral, critical mineral content, um, if those predictions are somewhat accurate, one of the things we're observing is that the crusts on these rocks are generally much thinner than anticipated, but we still don't know its critical mineral content. And that could potentially inform resource extraction outside the monument in international waters, but, um, uh, I doubt any mining would occur based on data generated here. It's more of a broader general understanding. I think our understanding of the biodiversity and the seamounts both in and out of the monument 
will also help to inform those decision-making processes. They might. So we have a Ritagorgia magnus spiralis in the bottom of the frame, a bright white Walteria coming into the top of the frame. Other Chrysogorgia as well over here and here. Looks like a hard coral here. Getting into some crustier looking material than we've seen earlier on the dive. We have a viewer wondering what the squat lobsters eat. Annabelle, you want to answer that? Do I know that? Or am I, have I said that before? I thought you did. Can we get a partial on this uh, mustard colored coral here? Okay, Jeff, zoom in on the mustard, please. Small <laughs> marine worms or crustaceans or scavenge on dead animals. Okay. That's what squat, squat lobsters eat. The gray puponicus. I know it's hard to get a polyp zoom with this current pushing everything around. You can try, though. Go ahead. I think this may be nice an acanthagorgia. Okay, you can come wide. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yay, I got it before Chris wrote it in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things. I'm you claiming your macrobiologist <laughs> title? I don't, I, I don't want to claim a title. I just want to know if I'm right or not. So, <laughs> without being biased. What was that then? A canthagorgia. Okay. The yellow one. Uh, the other. That was a personal goal of mine for this cruise was to get a better understanding of deep sea animals because that's not my field of expertise. Well done. Chris, you definitely don't need to be slower on your contributions. <laughs> They're appreciated at any speed. I you think so. Them. Beth, are you still happy with 0.3 knots? Yes. Okay. If you're happy with it, I am happy I'm with it. I'm happy with it. Yeah. I want to try to get us to the end of our waypoints by the end of this time. How many waypoints are there? I think there's one more after this one. There's 12, 12 total. Oh, yeah. Plenty of time. We have. Oh, look at that geo. But that was the distance Ooh. between waypoint 11 and waypoint. 12 is nearly a kilometer. Oh, Roger that. <laughs> oh, so um, bridge nav. Not all waypoints are created equal. Huh? Can we move five zero meters two two five, please? Thank you. Equidistant, I guess that is. Yeah, it'll be vertical and well, not actually that much vertical. Um, we're. Tr can you zoom out on high pack a little bit, Lynette, so yep. that our viewers at home can see how we're approaching this flat top kilo? Sorry. Yeah, so we're almost to the edge of the flat top of the guillo. You can see that's waypoint 11. So this will be about as steep as it gets for the rest of the dive. And this oh. will be the first time we get up on the flat top to see how it looks. So actually, yeah, we're doing pretty good in terms of our speed. Should just be getting up there uh, around the watch change. Does anybody know if Herc has ever had to use the knife that's in the porch oh, there? Oh, yeah. And for what? Uh, engineering work, Ocean Networks Canada. Mm. Cutting lines for deployment of sensors and instruments and stuff like that. Probably used a knife, I don't know, a couple dozen times. Probably broken a half dozen knives. We carry it with us here for fishing gear, and I don't think I've seen that. Uh, Can we get a partial on this coral here? Yeah. The stony one? Yes. Or stony whatever coral. it's called. I want to confirm if it's a. Okay, no, Jeff, go ahead. Or a madrepora. It's kind of a hard angle to tell. 
Yeah, you have a little more there? Yeah, we can get a little more. There's a couple of polyps there that are out. Uh, yeah, I, th I think Chris might be okay, right. Okay, thank is you. Okay, thank you. What's this orange crusty stuff? I don't know. We can have a quick look at it. Orange crusty. Okay, Jeff, go ahead. I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is it just scoured rock or is it? No, it's something on the rock. Something living on it? Go up a little bit maybe. What's up here? Still not obvious. Weird. Okay. We'll okay, thanks. Well, I hope we keep some of these stony corals in for the shift change so that Ryan can yeah, appreciate them and identify them. Can we have a look at this leggy coral with the uh, squat lobster on leggy it? Leggy coral eye. All right, and we're starting to see some of the carbonate there, sand please. from the geo above us. Okay, this looks maybe like a black coral. sure exactly which one. Great zoom. Thank you. Pretty. Looks like little glass. Great. And there's a little yellow puff uh, right there oh. that I want to get That's a zoom puff. on. Let's do a snap zoom on that, please. Yeah, I know we probably need to catch up. Ooh, sorry. Ooh. Maybe slightly less snappy. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, all right, sorry, that's all I got. Yeah, it's okay. So I'm thinking this reddish material is actually just rust. Okay, so butt coral. Is there a name for this sediment? This is um, probably debris from the geo above us. Here's more of this orange stuff, so if we have a chance to look at it. Yeah, I'm gonna do some catch up here and then Yep. Zoom on the next patch. That's fine. One of our viewers sent in a geography question. What do these locations have in common? East Siberian Sea, Western Sea of Japan, Solomon Sea, Bora Bora Baya Tortugas. They all have C's. Can't, my brain they, can't <laughs> They are all equally right distant from Nautilus right now, about 3,400 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank cool. you, viewers. Great bats. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that was worth it. That's fun. Bridge Do you think nav. This sediment is, is deep. Can we have another step? Five zero meters, two two five, please. Thank you. So we're definitely getting into evidence of rubble and breakage from the flat top above us. All right, I am, I'm at the place where I can look at the stuff again. Okay, we'll start looking at stuff when we see it. Let's look at some stuff. Looks like there's one of those little yellow puffs there. Do I do a push core? Not really. Okay. <laughs> Not with this material. I mean, what is mainly because I'm the one like? that I'm getting the sediment core, and this is not gotcha. material I'm interested gotcha. it's in. it's not of interest. It's a popular rock. Yeah, that's the spot to be, eh? Holy. It is. It's 
looks like columnar jointing in this big boulder that we're got everything attached to. Uh, just a current update. Yeah. It's gone. Okay. Hmm. Nothing. What? <laughs> How does? <laughs> I don't understand the world. Whoa! Now it's coming from the south. Is that what's going on? Is the it current? No, yeah. it's coming from nowhere. We're we're stagnant. Oh huh. yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah. Where's a physical oceanographer when you need one? <laughs> that was cool, huh? Like 200 meters of spicy. Yeah, that's it. that was wild. Is it a rat tail? Or I think it's it looks a like a chimera. chimera. I can never tell. It's a chimera. Ooh, yeah. bye. <laughs> Oh, okay, it's a yellow Chrysogorgia. Okay, that's why it was new to me. Ooh. Look at this. It's really would hot. It, would it make sense, though, that the current is less simply because we now have sediment here? Hey Jeff, could you close the iris a little bit? Thank you. What is this? Could we close it slightly on Atalanta, too, please? Just slightly. Oh, on that camera, there's either... Oh, see how it looks like... Gotcha. What's that surface like? Okay. It looks yeah. more textured than yeah, what I realized. Yeah, it looks sort of stringy or something, like noodly. Uh huh. It's broken fragments of a more like coral coquina, reef. But I want to come up not. this thing. That's what I want to do. Yeah, I was going to suggest this that is, we this spin. This is the fun part. Overhang. Yep. Can you do porch light before I come up too far? Yeah, porch light. And then I got to come up right now. Oh, that, that's way in there, actually. I cannot see the end of that tunnel. Okay. Oh. Let's check this out. Wow. Whoa. This is super really cool. fantastic. And are those barnacles on the rocks? We can do a quick I think it's stop and check. Yeah. Zoom in, please. Yeah, I think you're right, Annabelle. Mm. Well, I don't think that's what it is. Okay, come wide. Hmm. Okay, now there's got to be current up here to have all these fans. So can we yeah. do another check? You bet, I can see it. I'm pushing into it. Yeah, you're driving into it. Okay, so maybe that's what was preventing the current down there, is it's that the big this wall. ledge was blocking it. <laughs> yeah, that makes wow. sense. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to come off stick here. So those are right many now. different type of primnoid fans. It's still not much. There's, there's current, but it's not like we were seeing earlier. Okay. It's coming out of 270, heading 090. Anyway, yeah, wild. Kill your porch light if you want. Thanks. One of our viewers is hoping to go into marine biology and oceanography and is looking for any advice, academic advice or other cool things to study. eel down there it looks like Ooh. don't do what i did which is to not Overhang. study marine Burr. biology <laughs> <laughs> well you're here i, I did get stuff. here i studied biology just this like is, a, this is a fine. terrestrial okay. and, Let them come um, to a stop. All right. i've had to kind of catch up on a lot of things but uh, i guess i did make it here so yeah there's Can multiple paths to one? be yeah. an ocean scientist or ocean Thank engineer you. No one one path. So find what you are most interested in and pursue that. Beautiful overhangs. Like These the are incredible. Collapsed wow. giant huge. pillow. Wow. Huge fans. With primnoid. Gorgeous fans. Wow. wow. Primnoids for days. 
with a couple of Chrysogorges stuck here and there. I just had one of those, yeah, remember this is directly beneath us right now moments. Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to lose sight of that. It's like just right down there. There's a couple that have gotten knocked over laying on the ground. Mm, uh, some corals. Wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, no, Several I mean, uh, they've been of these down there. Of these <laughs> eels and that we've seen. Eel. Can we back away from this cliff face a little bit so we can see it in a wider mm -hmm. view? Kind of like this, this distance? Yeah, this is great. Oh, wow. Just to see the yeah. size of these extrusive yeah. pillows, really quite spectacular. So these large fans that we're seeing are a type of primnoid coral called Paracalitrophora. Really high density up here. A little sea star tucked away down there. So this is the shallowest we have had an ROV on this expedition, except for ascent and descent. You ready for another move? Sure. Okay. Let's do 30 meters. Okay. Bridge, nav. Oh, so before we go away, three can we zero look at meters, these? two three zero, yep. please. Well, we've got some Thank play you. in the tether. Just yeah, spend a little sure bit more thing. time looking at this orange stuff. We got a okay, closer. Okay, zoom in, please. Yeah, great. Sorry. It's okay. Bounce it. I like the surface of the sediment also. Huh. Yeah, so the rocks themselves look like they have a little hmm. bit more iron in them. They have that reddish, rusty color, but I don't know what this stuff is on top. Um, and it's new to me. There's a yellow Chrysogorgia coming hey, into frame. Chris back. asking for a yep. zoom on the we'll sediment. It. Also, on. it looks like tubular. You see that little? Yeah, we can totally do a sediment zoom. Zoom in, please. Um, yeah, tiny tubes. Looks like a pile of antlers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is the rubble That's from the coral reef above us. Okay, thanks. Wow, okay, come thanks. It's not what I was expecting. Yeah, so it's just a giant pile of dead hard coral. Advice for a future marine biologist, I'd say get your hands dirty with some research, find a, a lab that you can get into, or uh, some hands-on piece to see what it's like after uh, you get a degree. That's good advice. So our scientists a lounge calling it coral rubble. Wow, it's expansive, isn't it? Yeah, the I think wow. this is what we're going to see from here on out as we're on the top of this EO. So it's so cool. And then part yeah, of our objective fish. for coming up here was to see Zoom if the there's fish, fish yeah. up here. Right. So fish this is that apropos fish. timing. Oh, what is this one? Looks half asleep. Well, so he hasn't had fish. breakfast yet, and neither have we. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was just asking if the fish Good are bothered by the light. A lot of them yeah. just do this. They don't <laughs> seem to care. Chill. Float on by. So cool. There are some fourth graders in Cincinnati, Ohio, who would like to know what coral eat. They're filter feeders. They're filtering out small particles from the water with their little Tiny little tentacles.
So if you see a little commotion, it's our watch change right now. I'm hold off on a move here yes, while you hand please. over. Okay. If anyone is interested in working with Nautilus, we have internships. And I think applications open for those in August. We have another question about whether we have observed man-made debris on the seafloor. Uh, I think I've seen it on about half of our dives so far in this cruise. Usually fishing gear, ropes and nets. Hi, Dan. Another question coming in uh, about our some of our data. Um, we have our oxygen saturation and oxygen concentration, and they'd like to know what's the difference between the two. Uh, there are different ways to measure the same thing. So how much uh, oxygen and air, like what is the maximum amount you can have? That's 100% saturation when you convert that number into micromoles per liter, that gives you the concentration. Two men, Boris Joe. Right. So you're seeing a mixture of uh, coral debris that's in white and as well as manganese encrusted coral debris mm. as we're coming up on the side of this flat top geo so as a reminder to our audience this submarine ancient volcano at one point in time was above the sea surface and then was eroded away and then had a coral reef on top of it and then has sunk down um, and it's very old <laughs> so all of that is showing up here in this mixture of the coral, hard corals that used to live on this uh, when it was shallower before the seamount subsided. And I'm leaving. Breakfast time. It's right in the boneyard there. Tegan in Cincinnati would like to know how long corals can live. 
I'm sorry, can you say that one? Oh, uh, how, how long can corals live? Um, different groups can live for different lengths of time. Uh, I think the record is in black corals that can live on the order of thousands of years. Um, other types of coral can commonly live on the order of hundreds of years. So black corals are pretty exceptional in that way. Make a note that I zeroed the tether wraps. A note in the uh, in the dive log there is good. Uh, or in the log, I zeroed the tether wraps with 1.5. So fish down there. So we should come up with negative one okay. half. Right. Uh, yeah, I All can't right. work that out just now. Okay. So many of it for us, Jeff. Half of them, maybe. Oh my. Among some coral rubble. So, question: Do we have any evidence that World War II contributed to the demise of these coral reefs? I don't think we do. I think they were probably sunk way down before World War II. So. Also, how close was the Battle of Midway to the Midway Atoll? Not that this is the Midway Atoll, but I'm just kind of curious. Most of the shipwrecks that were marked on our map looked like they were north of Midway. And we are definitely pretty far east of Midway. Cool, thanks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A little different from last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just it's switched over when we got up to the... Yeah, you came over the lip. The lip, yeah. You can see a fish in uh, Argus camp. That's about it right now. What's all that return in the Herc sonar? Is that just the ground no, here? Know. Let's ground the move, could touch. So it's uh, it's hard to say, do I? I think yeah. it's the undulating uh Yeah, the topography here. Yeah, it's very interesting, uh huh. I'll give you another close up of it. It's like a, a boneyard. Hopefully it signs to come. Well I think what we wanna do is just wander around and look for targets to uh hone in on, you know? Yeah, I haven't seen any worthwhile and if there's nothing maybe we'll drop down do you want to zoom out on yeah. that pack Tachi? yeah there. let's do that i think we're pretty interested in the fish diversity up here so maybe we can get some good zooms on some fish that'd be yep worthwhile use of our time up here go a little further is wait what 12? 12 is the last one yeah. i think yeah is that the top well the contours do keep going gently Oh, um, wow, yeah. It's pretty flat, you know. Um, yeah, that'd be way too far to go to get to the tippity top. <laughs> yeah. Things miles across. That's the, e <laughs> that's the edge of the map, anyway. <laughs> um, well, can we, can we do point five and uh, try to get to waypoint 12 and then turn around and go back down the another side sure sounds good go faster than that if you want Let's see if we can find a living reef up here be pretty cool uh, uh what speed 
would you be comfortable with? Let's start with point five. All right. I can go faster. The scientists will be. Cool, but oh, like what was that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Bridge, this is Nev. Uh, can we adjust our speed to point five knots, please? There's so a person studying botany who wanted to know if we see any plants down here. Jeez, how did I get so far out? If we do not. Yeah. Uh, too deep for photosynthesis, so we don't get any plant life down here. What's Unless our, it's uh, uh, fallen down, so you'll see some. Of course, the ground is about 200, so can't cover do that. 200 on yep. Atlanta and leave it there. Then I'll know to. Yeah. If you keep adjusting while I drift, ripples. I don't yeah. catch nope. it here. Until. What's up? There's some fish here. We can, when you have time, zoom on fish. Right here. Plants are also not very salt tolerant generally. So even in shallow water, most of Go them back a don't grow. Yeah, yeah so about it. Oh, yeah, actually, looks like he just munched on something. Missed it. Okay, Jeff, push in there. Hmm. Looks like Mizumia. I could definitely be mistaken. Okay. So if you didn't catch it, this uh, ground texture that's new is old uh, coral from coral reefs that are long gone by. Some of them are old enough to be encrusted with uh, ferrometallic, uh, yeah, with a crust. Quick zoom there. Ferromanganese crust. guy. Not sure about these okay. species, but we'll keep looking. It's difficult to determine the age of corals. And they grow at varying rates depending on their environment the type of coral it is? Yes, there's a few different ways to age corals. Um, in some corals, they lay down growth rings, kind of like trees do. Um, some corals, you can look at the decay of certain isotopes, like carbon-14. There are other isotopes as well. Um, Hit the use. button over there, Katachi. I think those are some of the most common ways. <gasps> I messed up. So yeah, we'll stay up on top of this geo and explore the, the uh, summit features here for a little while and then uh, maybe end the dive back down on a steeper slope as we have a we might have a little extra time or s s somewhat shallow 776 meters so it won't take us very long to get to the surface so we have about three hours to keep exploring here. I probably have to do it again. Take okay. Take for some reason. Touch. Thank you. Bridge, this is Nav. Four zero meters at two five zero, please. So you can also look at the growth rate of corals using photogrammetry. So like going around doing a 360 view of the coral and reconstructing it at multiple time points. That takes coming with an ROV uh, multiple times for a deep sea coral. So 
so it's quite difficult. You can also stain them with calcine. Um, so that's basically uh, a fluorescent material. And then you come back sometime later and you see how much linear extension they have uh, from the sort of stained portion on their skeleton. If you have a good sample, can you like, radiocarbon date the growth rings? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's probably a good way to do it for the really big ones. I think lead dating is a thing too. Mm. Interesting ripples. You hoping that Emil's watching? What's that? I said you're hoping that Emil's watching. Yeah. Are they symmetrical or asymmetrical? Short story is uh, asymmetrical current, symmetrical is wave action, which I learned on a previous expedition that that wave action is uh, makes ripples at thousands of meters, which I never would have guessed. I can never look at sand ripples the same way again. Looks like they're pretty much oriented um, with their long axis down slope, so or uh, parallel to the slope, so the current should be running Can we zoom on this uphill downhill eel like fish here yeah zoom so in there if you want wow cool very narrow head yeah <laughs> so cool See it breathing, actually. Did the ship change more west? Oh yeah, yeah. Our bearing now is two five zero. Got it. So, from the guide, this looks like the gene is called Venifica. I, I got it. Oh, Chris Kelly is saying Metastoma, actually. Okay. Same family, different genus. Is that like an egg? Oh, urchin. Right. That makes more sense. That would be a big egg. That would be cool. Hundreds of years old, also. <laughs> I uh, thought you uh, could finally practice your egg picking up skills. <laughs> <laughs> According to a Japanese scientist, but you know, what the, but those guys live to be hundreds of years old. Which guys? Uh, the sea urchins. Oh, yeah. I did but not have thought so. Quick zoom on this guy as we go by, Jeff. Yep. Roger. Ah, Trevor. We've got our uh, new video intern, Trevor, on board today. <laughs> I've never done that. That's this. good. I'm going to have to break in another video intern. It's got a very pointy nose. Yeah, it really does. Bottle nose slipper fish. Bridge, this is now. Here, Ruben. Another four zero meters at 250, please. OK. Rat tail. On we go. The distance and speed of the moves okay, or you want to bump it up? Yeah, it's fine. If we go faster than half an hour, it'll, we won't have time to stop. It's beautiful fish zooms. Well, that'll just be. Is that better? Ooh, not that much. How about there? I have a question for the pilots. Uh, they want to know what is the purpose of having uh, Atalanta or Argus as the second ROV? It's always good to have two ROVs. For a spare in case one breaks. 
Uh, the main purpose is for uh, spatial awareness and that uh, of a bird's eye view that we get look at from uh, this fish over here. I'm having another ROV and look at the. View over our shoulder. Go ahead, Trevor. It's Zoom sticking. in about halfway there. It's sticking. Hold on. Let me try to break it free. There we go. That. A little more if you want. Laser zoom, as I. That's what we. Cops? What we usually do halfway. Yeah, it kind of looks like yeah, it. It's good. It looks so small. Um, I thought Sorry. the small ones were all zone. gray. There you go. Can we come out? There we go. Got it. Looks different. Might be the. A little bit. There's a similar one in the guide called Silicus Quama. Chris Kelly is typing, so he might have a different ID. Got the landing gear deployed. Yep. And what was yellow just up and to the left? So this is Quama, we're thinking. I thought I saw an eyeball in that family. Oh, something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, good eye. Where do you see? Yellow to the left? Yeah, there was a little thing with a little eyeball, I think. I don't know. We're getting run over. It yeah. Yeah. just me. What's that? Seems dark. Yeah, yeah the top me. of the... Bridge, this is Nev. 40 meters, 250, please. I'm still... Uh, I'll yeah, follow you, you to the west to as you... viewers wants to know if the shrimp we see zooming past are the same species we enjoy eating or if they're different no, I'm not sure they're a bit Paul so you but, can uh, center us up they're definitely closely related to what we eat if bring our head to the left a little the offset keeps a lot of them are bright red out of your face. a lot of them are very small that we see down here too compared to some of the jumbo prawns we're used to Can you turn on the uh, avalanche light so I can actually they're, see they're each on. other? Huh? They're on. It's All the uh, iris. Fish. How do you want it? So I can see the tether. There's a fish just to our right if we're able to take a look at. Zoom halfway there if you want. That stickiness is sure annoying. Oh, Alright, you're Jeffy. Well, I thought our video intern was doing an okay job, but it looks like. Uh, <laughs> Fired immediately. <laughs> yeah. some yellow paint on it. Oops, yeah, it does. Zoom out just a bit. Thanks. Yeah, you can see its lateral line running down it pretty well. So the fish Iridescent. Yeah. Okay, zoom out. Notice that most of the fish down here don't have that off comes. triangular or forked tail. 
They just have more of a eel-like tail that tapers off. Mm -hmm. That one had a forked tail. But just as you say it, we see one with a... Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm wondering what the benefit is to having uh, the longer, more eel-like tail. Not sure. Uh, it's just, a, I think, a different form of swimming. Uh, somebody wants to know if we can see fish in the Herc or Atalanta sonar. Sometimes. It's tough to pinpoint because they move, and so by the time you get a full sonar pass, it's moved on to a new location, so it's hard to pinpoint things that way. That Bridge, move. this is Nev. Tether limit. I've been watching the Argus Another four zero a lot because I'm trying to uh, two five zero, please. find a target to go towards. There is one kind of ridge consistently off to Argus's left, but um, it's back towards the slope, so... I'm going to swing my heading just a little bit left for a second, Dan, to take a look. Zoom in on the green guy. There. Mm -hmm. Same one. Ooh, green. Very shimmery. That's a color we haven't seen much. Haven't done ROV fish herding in a while. Another rat tail? I believe so. Ventral fossa is the ID we have on this. Yes, yeah. It's interesting okay. that its tail looks translucent at the very end, but then it's got that one dark dot. Yeah. Get it go wide. Looks flat up here all the way. There's a fish off to your left. That's getting more and more south, I think. What are the currents like up here? Quick zoom there, Jeff. I know they said on the ridge right before we got up to the top there was a wicked current. Yeah, um, I saw that early this morning. Type of C pen I don't think maybe? there's too seen? much or too bad going on right now. Type of C, uh, C pen maybe? Yeah. Chris said. Uh, Out of this coral rubble sand, huh? Yeah. There's a lot of coral here once upon a time. Yeah. It's probably stony coral, more shallow. Yeah. yeah. I can't really tell from the skeleton whether it was Madrophora or Selenosomelia. You have an idea of the uh, current there. So, yeah. right to left, probably. Yeah. Not terribly strong, though. That's Well, so let's keep going towards Waypoint 2. I might not want to go all the way to Waypoint 2. We might turn back and explore a new summit feature. Bridge, this is Nav. That's Another right, four zero meters bearing 250. So we have room for one more rock sample. Now slurps. Just that, okay.
Aloha kakahiaka kako. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. I'm back. What happened to Chris? He um, snuck he, out. <laughs> he went to go grab breakfast. I was like, yes, please, go grab breakfast. I just finished my um, my first interaction for today. How'd it go? It went really well. It was actually my mom's class and a robotics teacher. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. A few more of these sea pens that Chris Kelly placed in the genus Panatula. Panatula. Sea pen Panatula. Have you been seeing this a lot this morning? Uh, just a couple of them in the last like minute or so. On the sea pen for rain. That's good. Interesting. That's great, thanks. I'm loving the ripples on the bottom of the ocean. It looks symmetrical to me. Looks like we're coming up to some harder substrate. And the rubble is getting thicker. Interesting. Some crusts here. Mm. Hold position there for a minute. Katachi. Stop him up there. Pretty large Bridge, this there. is Nav. Can we please hold position? Well, we have a 150 meter layback, so it'll. Uh, Atlanta will keep moving for quite a while. Huh? We take a look at this fallen coral here. A few primnoid fans up there. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, no idea. Okay, Kilani now. He's like the first white polyps we've ever seen. Some barnacles on there. There's the pink dot in there. It looks, makes me think it's a bamboo. Okay, go what? Yeah, it looks like it. I'm looking almost straight down here. So you probably know. Yeah, you're going to have to spin around. It's going to go in 20 meters on the other side of us by the time we get done with the rocks. Oh, nice. Some rocks. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty interesting that this rock is sitting here by itself. Lonely rock. It's only like big an oasis. It is. Mm. Oasis rock. in the sand. A rock oasis. Looks like a sea anemone on the bottom there. Oh yeah, sort of pom pom like an enemy over to the right. Mm -hmm. Don't see primnoids that have fallen. Is that very a shrimp often. on the? Oh yeah. Maybe a crab. We sampled one of these earlier. Yeah. What, kind, what is that? Do we Some know? type of primnoid. Sort of looks like Caligorgia to me, but I don't know that it is with any degree of certainty. I'll come back around to the other side there in a second, right? Just going to do the downwind part sure. first. Do you think the rocks around are just pieces that have broken off of this? Can we zoom here? Yeah, it sort of looks that way, but um, Go ahead, Jeff. can't really tell. Looks like there's some sea sponge growing on it, but I cannot tell. Yeah, there's definitely some in encrusting sponge happening. This looks like stony coral. Madripora. A 
Come, Carl. That's great, thank you. It looks like another lobster there, too. Am I okay to ask a question from a class in Connecticut? Okay. Do the ROV, um, does the ROV tether ever get caught in anything on the ocean floor? Yep. We've uh, had to abort dives due to getting tangled up with abandoned fishing gear. Mm. Um, the other thing I can think of is just, you know, like if there's a big Can't overhang, yeah, yeah, I'm on it. Uh, you know, if there's a big overhang or something and perks underneath it, uh, an Atalanta or Argus flies over it, that could also happen. You're going to have to come right down on the deck, mate. We're running out of leash there. Awesome. Thank you. That's and then, good, good for now. Um, um, Ryan, what kind of sea life are we looking at really right long. now? Um, a lot of different corals, uh, primarily. So these big fans we're seeing are all corals, um, along with some types of crustaceans. So we see a squat lobster, which is a type of crab off to the left. Um, some sponges are sort of encrusting on that rock as well. I think that's a, most of it. What's the yellow thing? That looks like encrusting sponge, maybe, but maybe we could oh. come in on tight on Push that. Push in a bit, there we go. Sea spider behind it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Push in a bit more if you want. Hmm. Good eye, Katachi. Oh, I bet that one's poisonous. Okay, <laughs> you'll have to go right there. Oh, I'm gonna set it down until they stuck it on me. That one probably gives you superpowers if you get bit. It would give you, Kotachi, the superpower. <laughs> What's that? Like I horribly misjudged the current. You get to see an enemy dance pretty good. And that quick zoom falls in there. And there oh, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Bummer, I wanted to get around for the uh, starburst over there. But Question. What is the biggest squid or octopus you have ever seen? The biggest no. what octopus? Squid or octopus. Oh, squid or octopus. Um, they're not that big. The ones, the deep sea octopus that I see aren't really that big. Mm. Maybe a meter at the biggest with their tentacles spread out. Mm. I've never seen one of the huge ones or anything. Yeah. It's a really tall black coral here. Some black coral. Matching large squat monsters. Like a bathy pathy? Same group. Uh, different sp oh, species for sure. From? Dust is coming from behind me.
Let's look for a rock to grab here too because um, this might be the only rocky outcrop we see on the summit. Eric is a pig pen at the moment. Sea anemone? Nope, I don't think it's a sea anemone. It's not a sea anemone. Oh, that's another uh, Brzingid sea star. Brzingid Any rocks sea you like star. here? Yeah, this one right in front of you looks okay to me. Hmm. Little bathy pathies off to the left, maybe. I'm uh, as close as I can get, Paul. Let's see if we can reach down and get it. Some pretty big snails on that rock too. We can take a look at after the sample. Mm. We haven't seen many large snails on this expedition. Okay, bring it up into the light. Be a carbonate? Not sure though. Interesting. We'll cut it open. See what it's like on the inside. You want to swing out this little oil, hit the light there. Argus is currently at 747 meters. Hercules is at 763 meters. You're good. Um, just don't open the box all the way. You're good for F. What's that? Got it. I'll wait till you swing around and we'll... The sediment is filled with dead pieces of coral, yes? It is, yeah. Ready? Gonna put it on your uh, monitor there. Nice job. Touchdown. I wonder, Dwight, do you know if we use the the, zic, the zircon method to date our rock samples? He's not listening to me. Never mind. He doesn't have he doesn't have SPL on. Sounds like something from Star Trek. <laughs> the Zircon method. We had sample number one seven six. Yes. Okay. I think the purple thing you folks were seeing at the bottom of a rock was of that big old rock was a uh, sea anemone. All right, ready for another ship move? Sure. Bridge, this is Nev. Four zero meters bearing two five zero, please. Wow, Chris Kelly has noted in the chat that um, a liopathy is one of those black corals we just passed on that big rock. Uh, one was dated off Oahu. Um, that the whole colony could have been as old as 10,000 years. It's one of the oldest corals ever dated. Pretty amazing. See if 
you come counterclockwise, is that going to take my turn out? Should do. You came clockwise to come around, did you? I can't, I can't hear you, you're not. Coming counterclockwise. to know about the zircon method of dating rocks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll have to dig back into the brain for that. Um, <laughs> oh. Oh. Basically, no, no. any uh, any sort it of was, pheno that was a uh, mini Zeus runaway. Any phenocrysts yeah. in the rock is sort uh, of a, come down to give me a, little a mineral that's that's yeah. larger than the matrix, and uh, they're often good candidates for getting uh, age dates on. So there's a, a there's um, radioisotopes that uh, make up uh, substitutions in the mineral structure of zircons and um, clinopyroxenes and other minerals. And uh, those um, radioisotopes decay, and we can measure their concentrate, their uh, quantities. And that ratio, and knowing the decay rate, which is measured very precisely in the lab, we can get age dates because when the rock crystallized, the mineral kind of locked in uh, a, a signature. Um, and that's pretty much when the radioisotope began its radioactive decay, is right when it crystallized. And so that starts the clock. And knowing that decay rate, and knowing the um, measured quantities of these isotopes, you can, uh, and Turn the ratio into a uh, into an age, basically. From what I remember, <laughs> <laughs> that sounded really good. Thank you. There's like tons more fish that we're seeing compared to. Yeah, quite a few. Last. Pretty high urchin density too. We get a partial zoom on this urchin. Sure. Like a little different one, maybe. Uh. Go ahead, Jeff. I think the zircon crystal has uranium and a bit lead isotopes in it, so that's a good candidate for um, uranium lead geochronology for much older rocks. Generally, um, I believe the method of dating we'll use on we'll try to use on these basalts or is argon argon dating argon argon dating yeah is it a ratio of two different argon two, isotopes two different arg argon isotopes correct yeah and apparently that gives the best results and most accurate information um and one of our geology colleagues on shore kevin conrad at uh university of nevada las vegas has that capability in his lab i believe and so Val Finlayson, our, our co-lead scientist on board who's been cutting up all the rocks, is uh, working closely with Kevin's group. And uh, there's plans to get argon-argon dating done on some of these basalts. That's a great zoom, thanks. This is an echinothurid urchin. You can really see some of their pedicillaria going, sort of jaw-like spines. Bridge, this is Nev. Four zoom meters bearing 250, please. Kotachi, can the bathymetry map or the high pack map tell us whether or not we will be looking at uh, sediment or rock? Uh, not the current way we've been having it, but I've, I've seen lots of um, uh, mapping software that's connected to the transducers or sonar systems of a ship that do tell you what kind of sediment you have or um, mm. underneath you. 
Uh, I think it's based off of the strength of return. So um, if you get a really strong reflection, so th the way we map is we send a ping uh, a bit there from want, the yeah. transducers mounted at the bottoms of the ships. And um, if you get most of that acoustic ping back, then that means what you have underneath is very, very dense and very hard. So most likely rock or something. Um, but if, uh, if you have something like soft mud, um, you're gonna get a lot less return back. Okay. So um, based on the strengths of the returns, they, uh, each software will standardize uh, the, the signal strength in various bins. And, s and some of them can get really specific. Like it can be rocks, pebbles, sand. Um, I've seen some crazy ones too, like shells. Like how, how how do you know what's different from shells and sand? But I guess the the hardware is pretty good these days. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, the high pack map that we use doesn't show that detail, but we have other computers in the data what's lab that by here? allow us to look yeah, at the backscatter and the intensity the of the returns. So we do look at that when we do oh, our dive mining. Wow. But we don't use that information to navigate in, there if you in, want to. in high pack, so it's different. We just Maybe look at the contours and yeah. the shape. It's got bigger landing gear. <laughs> Those pectoral Those fins, they're so look outrageous. Look a little too large for that fish. <laughs> what are you doing there, buddy? I love it. <laughs> it's uh, mid-evolution. It, it reminds me of wheelies. I guess it helps it with the way it's feeding. Look, it has to be sort of constantly landing, so it's got, like Dan said, good landing gear. Come down a bit. Couple <laughs> that is really wild. I've never yeah. seen anything like that. I have a new favorite fish, I think. Now we got to figure out the name of it. Oh. Oh. It's blowing the sand away. Whoa. That's crazy. Quick jobs. I'm going to call this. It's a four. Oh, it's like extending its jaw into the sand. Look how it's pet. Like, there's it's some. Just a bit, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. See its top fin kind of just like fluttering yeah. really fast? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of. Something else, too, is kind of around it fluttering really fast. Uh, the bottom, I think. Just undulating the fins. So our uh, ID on this fish is Stethopristus, the genus? Stethopristus. He might hold still for a little closer zoom there. Now he looks tuckered out. <laughs> he's, been, he's been busy. <laughs> oh, man. Looks like he's, he's really tuckered out. Shishi <laughs> 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 she nai nai. I wonder if he's playing dead for us. I wonder if the light stunned him a little, maybe. Mm. <laughs> if oh normally when my fish do that, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's totally oh, playing dead weird. right. Oh, and it's and right we're off. And we're off. Whoa. Oh, you can swim only with the with the uh, dorsal. He's just trying to fake us out. Yeah. It almost had us. It's got like two modes of flying. Okay, one more zoom, then we're out of here. <coughs> oh, it has like a bottom fin yeah. that's constantly mm -hmm. fluttering. Kotachi, does the high pack, um, what? What practically what is shown on camera three or satellite feed three? Um, does that show the depth at all? Uh, kind of. So okay. we save the depths in each of the waypoints. Um, so if, you, if I click like properties, then we have the depths here. And I've also loaded in the 10 meter contour lines. So that means each line is um, 10 meters different uh, from the previous one and, it, and uh, if I want to figure out like what our depth is using this 
then I'll find the closest waypoint and do some counting. <laughs> Roger. It's uh, not a very elegant solution, but. Whoa. Stop him up there for a minute. Kadachi, let me catch up. Uh, ship stopped. All right. So this is a Faurella, a different type of primnoid than we've been seeing much. Apparently they sampled them uh, earlier on this dive. Push in just a bit on the corals if you want. Hang on, I've got to reset the recorders. Potentially a yellow chrysogorgid there, but sure. Density of polyps on that primnoid is pretty amazing. Uh, zoom in a bit more there if you want. A hermit sure. crab. Yeah, it's a pretty shot. If you pan just a little bit to the right, I think I saw a little crab. It's right there. You can yeah. see it. Yeah, it's a shrimp. Oh, oh yeah. there's that crab. <laughs> That's the second uh, Minizus total run out. It looks like it's eyeing us out. Defending his home. Mm -hmm. All right, that's a good look. Thanks. How far up from how far up does this slope go from the summit, Dwayne? Oh, sorry, I blanked out. Um, how far up does this go? Yeah, the center yeah, of the How far are we from like uh, the real summit? Summit about five kilometers, honestly. Oh wow. Yeah. Maybe maybe f four kilometers. And it does, it, you know, it's not a perfectly flat top geo. It's very flat topped, but there are some little bumps and hummocks in the center of it that might have higher populations of coral rocks. Come to the south of you a bit there. Yeah, the tops of these seamounts are enormous. We're just looking at one very small little corner of it. Um, convert to miles, it's probably something like six miles wide by 12 miles long. Wow. At the longest uh -huh. axis. Sea pen? Yep. Penatula? Penatula.
Have there been notable differences in discoveries between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, not including the plate tectonics? Sure, yeah, there, uh, could for another move. Lots of different things happening in each ocean, ba ocean basin. Bridge, this is Nev. Four zero meters, bearing two five zero, please. In the Pacific, we have these really intense oxygen minimum zones, for example. So that could be what killed off all these corals as the as the seamount sank. Hmm. It entered into that oxygen minimum zone. That was what Chris Kelly just postulated on the science chat. Sea star. Thanks, sir. There was just a question, and I think you just answered it as to if we know why there is so much coral that looks like it died at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're thinking that it went through that no oxygen zone. Yeah. Cool. And you'll notice that the rubble is in a sort of state of dissolving, mm. and that's what a lot of the sort of finer sediment is, is that sort of rubble turning into sand and silt. I'm kind of bummed. I was hoping for like a shallow area with lots of interesting things to look at today. Look We're up. not there Just yet. A There's still some more to go. Back in the box there. Good text. I got up around 6.30 and it, it, they were still down on the slope and it was really interesting. Some f really steep cliffs, fast current, lots of uh, animals. Lots of animals, you said? Yep. Yeah, it was really dense, like about 20 minutes before I got our watch even. Yeah, I remember watching it. It was really cool. Yeah, if, if those of you who are watching at home, um, on the nautiluslive.org page actually gives us um, the ROV depths, water temperature, ship heading. I don't, could some of these seamounts at one point have been islands like the uh, San Juan seamount? I don't know. I'm not sure if this was ever exposed to air. But it could have been, right? That's like, like part of the evolution of these mm -hmm. islands. Do you, do you remember the name of the f floppy fin fish we just saw a few minutes ago? Yes, that's uh, Stethopristus. I don't see it. Where is it? <laughs> okay. Stethopristus. S-T-E-T-H-O-P-R-I-S-T-I-S. Stethopristus. Feels like I was just in a spelling bee just now. <laughs> Zoom in on the slime star as we go over it, Jeff. Feel it? Bridge, this is Nev. Another four zero meters bearing two five zero, please.
I wonder how much more of this we will have. I feel like it's, it's changed a little bit since we got on. But yeah, more, more sand now than before. A little less rubble. There's a comment saying, uh, how often do you get to see a fish you haven't seen before playing dead? There's no need to be bummed. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. To any of the fish. Um, the fish we've been seeing probably don't have bioluminescence. Uh, the way you could tell is that they usually have photophores along their lateral line. Um, which is like the like a sensing appendage. Uh, I don't know how to intelligently describe it besides saying it's like a line that goes sideways on the sides of their bodies. And usually they glow, they have like glowing blue dots. And I think you start seeing those a little bit more at um, depths beyond 3,000 meters. Copy that, sorry. Take a quick zoom on this star. Go ahead, Jeff. That's great, thanks. Would anybody happen to know when this coral died? Did it all die at the same time? Or was it over a long period of time? It's really hard to say. Um, some of it looks like in different stages of dissolution, so it looks like maybe at different times. Like some of them have look left for a spawn. Feral manganese the crust on them. Some has obviously fully dissolved. Some has not. So my guess would be a little more gradual of a process. Thank you. Some more primnoid corals here with a bunch of crinoids on them. We'll uh, hold up after this move so we can check out the rock for a while. Here's one. Yeah, if we could just do a, a quick look see. Maybe over here is probably the most interesting part. So I come around to put my nose under the breeze this time. It's a really large Brazingid sea star there.
quite a variety on this little tiny yeah, crop. little island here. Another oasis. Yeah, urchin down there. Push in on the uh, urchin and another guy if you want. Is the orange thing a crinar or what is it called? It's a type of sea star. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's so cool. They're sort of like upside down sea stars. Wow. Big, big fish. Up. Oh, wow. Oh, no, it's just That's a shadow. shadow. Sorry. <laughs> shadow. I got tricked. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, actually a big fish. I'll go check it out. Are crinoids um, harmful to coral? To your right. Are they what? Towards. Harmful to the corals? I don't that think so. I think they're sort of just... Fish. Oh, it's, it's big. big fish. Yeah, it's big. If it were the size of the shadow, that yeah. would be wild. Yeah. Whoa, big fish. I'll fly up as you get closer. Right. If you do. Awesome laser pointing there. How big is it? Uh, Over a meter. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Wow. It sees us. Hello, big fish. Hello, hi, it heard hi, me. Hi, Oil fish is the common name on this one, apparently. Oil? Yeah. Okay, Oil cool. fish. Thank you. Awesome. So, well, it's actually going the right way. That's the way we need to go anyways. Take us to the reef. Take me to your family. I want to see them all. <laughs> really cool shadow. Action. Super cool. Coming up, Paul. Oh. Yeah, I'm up to 21 and still coming up. This is the kind of stuff you see in movies. Yeah. He's doing one knot now. Faster than hurt. <coughs> Time to come back down. Okay. Bye-bye, fishy. Yeah, we really don't see schools of fish at all, do we? Just uh, individuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Down at the bottom here, that's not what the theme is. Quick fly by the rock here. Oh my. Interesting sort of. Very shiny. Yeah. Interesting sort of. These sort of scrapes yeah, in it. I yeah. was looking at the striations. If they're, can we zoom on that and look at sure. what's causing those lines? in a bit there if you want to. Almost Whee. not a very elegant landing. Oh, they are sort of little sediment filled cracks. We don't need to look, but the fish is uh, right behind Turk in the rear mm. can there. It's checking us out. Okay, could go away. Interesting. Not sure what would cause that. Could be faulting of some sense in the ancient past. Uh, let me come around just a bit here. So we have decided to stay up on the summit feature for the rest of the dive. So we have about two hours left and we'll just keep exploring and documenting the communities up here. Uh, we might not get back to a a summit feature like this on the next dive, so we're going to 
stay up here for now. Copy that. So you want to uh, slow the speed down? To, are you happy to keep doing 0.5 there? Actually, the speed's not too bad as long as we're able to stop and take a look at things here, to, here and there. Yeah, so far we have been. And we'll, we can just go past waypoint 12 and, and pick a new one somewhere. Roger. Okay, you can carry Bridge, the gear. This is Nev. Four zero meters bearing two five zero, please. Are we still uh, looking for any samples, or just kind of doing a visual survey? I think if something good came up, we'd still want to sample it. Yeah, we could we could double up if we had to, or um, we have the nodule bag, right? Uh, oh, and we have uh, we don't have slurps. Oh, he said yeah. Did they fill up the uh, slurp jars? We could go for a push core. That might be a good thing to do. What's no, that? the the slurp jars. Uh, there's a there's a uh, pretty thick branch of a coral jammed in there. We think. Got it. One of those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Looks like the pit crew will have to do some dislodging later. You got the right pit crew for that. Just as the dislodge technique patented. All right. I like that pit crew. Slime star. How would we try and say that in Hawaiian? Pe uh, pe aka slime. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. We gotta go, Ipo. Okay, we have to go now. now. We have to go now. Okay. Yes. Welcome back, Chris. Wow. Go for that sea bed. Maybe periodically, if you can. Uh just do some scans, uh, kind of off the bottom, to the right, to the left, and make sure we're not missing anything important. Raj. Yeah, are you talking about sonar scans? Yeah, I'm not trusting the sonar to give us reliable things. Uh, more visual scans, I think. Deb Kelly is fond of saying, wag your tail. I'm just going to stand up. Your ROV does this. Yeah. It's not floating. Bridge, this is Nev. 
four zero meters to bearing two five zero, please. Another Panachua C pen. Zoom in on that guy if you want as we come around. We have a question about how we go about learning and using Hawaiian for the crew members that don't speak the language originally. Uh, we have some, some guides that give us some of the Hawaiian words for what we're doing. Um, we also, uh, just by listening to Hawaiian being spoken, and get a feel for the language. Sonar has picked out all the rocks so far, Dwight. I don't know. Here we yeah. have also our TriTech here, which is picking them up pretty good. It's looking out 25 meters. Good idea. I'll look at the TriTech. Yeah, but it does a little better because it's upside down on the front of her. So that's how I've been finding the rocks. Another large Brazingid sea star here. compare it to the mesotech when I see if the targets match. So do we think these are shallow water corals or deep water corals that are all in pieces here? Deep water corals. Push in on this rock if you want to. Yeah. Is that 20 meters per ring or 20 meters total? It's uh, it's looking out 20 meters at the moment. Yep. Yeah, right. So we have a nice bright, interesting, bright thing there. Yeah. So that would be 40 meters out. Gotcha. Okay. What's that? Yeah, this is a 20 meter ring. So they're five, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Yeah, 20 on each side. So. Oh, I got you. It's 20 total, so five per ring. Right. Yep. Yeah. 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 Is that full zoom on the cup coil, is it? It is. Right. Yeah, so the skeleton looks like a species called. Selenosomelia, we're thinking, okay. uh, which is a deep water coral me. that can form really massive reefs and does in this part of the ocean. There are some uh, reefs formed by Selenosomelia still living. And is that a scleractinian? Or? Yeah. yeah, it is. Boy, did I hear you say that at one point the seamount was above water? Probably, um, permitting all this coral, not the, not the coral rubble that we're seeing, but a lot of this coral sand was probably originally derived from um, coral, re coral reefs and from shallow water that cool. have turned out since turned into limestone mm -hmm. rock and it's buried beneath the sand as the seamount subsided. Bridge, this is Nav. Four zero meters bearing two five zero, please. Yeah, look at that. Those uh, these little rocks ring like a bell in the TriTech sonar. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's our hunting strategy. That's how we're gonna find stuff like this. Great. Are 
usually I don't get to full screen it because the uh, navigator and the Argus pilot are addicted to the sub bottom profiler on Argus that we use as an altimeter. Right. I don't know how we're surviving without it. <laughs> <laughs> nice and flat here, we don't need it. Yeah, we've managed to do a whole expedition with a regular altimeter. The sub bottom on Argus, I, like, I don't know how to read it. But it gives you a nice uh, graphical depth history, but then again, so does Grafana. Yeah, it's a prettier picture than looking at a number jumping around. Oh. Yeah, I, we do this. They always turn off the Argus altimeter because it makes a little bit of noise on it. I always turn it back on because I'm used to looking at a number. Can we try and look at the base of this? I'm trying to see what it's attached to. I wonder if it's growing on a piece of the rubble. Yeah, could be. Might need the other side. Yeah, the, I could try the, you want to push in there, Jeff, while we're here? We'll try the other side, but it's uh, upwind, so. Like a little bit of rock, maybe. Okay, the way it'll come around. Yeah, we're trying to Push in just decide there if you want. origin of this maybe a little more. rubble and Good. how Thanks. old or recent it might be. You want to come up a bit more? I think I'm right seeing different, there. a few different species in the rubble, skeleton-wise. Seen some that looks like cement Salinas Amelia, but this what we're seeing right here does not. Maybe it's more recent. I don't know. Hard to say. Push in there. Oh. Could be growing on a big piece of dead skeleton. So that would indicate some age to these skeleton bits if this was able to attach and grow for all these years? Yeah.